Hello there, very good morning to you. You're watching Sewing Street and my name is Debbie Shaw and I'm going to be with you live here for the next three hours. Now, because this is nice and bright and early on a Sunday morning, we've got a special treat for those early birds that are with us right from the start. Um, we're trying to do this every single day and we bring you a reduced price item for as long as we have the stock. So the last couple of times I was here last week, we, I can't remember what it was, it might have been threads. We sold out within about 15 minutes. We'd like it to last a little bit longer than that, but when you see a bargain, you see a bargain. This is a bargain. So we have 100% cotton grey fabric, pale grey, like a silvery grey. Um, another one of those fabrics that's going to be so good for just filling up your stash. Bags of cushion covers, linings, bag linings, jacket linings, skirt linings, skirts, blouses. There's so many different uses for this fabric. And of course, I do say it a lot, but if you're using a pattern fabric, then you'll find that your plain fabric makes your patterns pop a little bit more. Pattern fabric tends to be more expensive, so it makes your money go a little bit further by stretching out that pattern fabric. Actually, we've got some fabrics coming up in the next hour, which are all very, very heavily patterned in bundles. So this is a nice fabric to break those up, to put some sashes and borders around your pattern fabric. And there is loads of it. So um, you're actually getting two and a half meters in total. This is 112 centimeters wide. This is what your two and a half meters looks like, which is about the size of our studio. And this is all you're going to pay for it. 13 pounds and 96 pence. So in effect, you're paying for two meters and you're getting half a meter for absolutely free. While we have the stock again, that is a really good early bird. I'm so impressed with that one. Lovely color as well and the quality. Don't think that you get what you pay for at Sewing Street because you don't, you're getting a lot more. So it's a nice dense quality. Well, you won't expect, you know, bargain fabrics and you'll get it home and think, oh, it's, it's really scratchy, it's not very really soft. The, the weave is too loose, you can see straight through it. And this isn't, it's a really nice, dense, lightweight cotton fabric that's not just linings, you could easily make a blouse or a shirt out of this as well. So if you'd like to order 0800 001 4433, you can see the sheen on that, you can see the handle on it, um, and again 100% cotton, really, really useful. You can order on our website, which is sewingstreet.com, and you may notice, if you're, if you're new to us and you're looking around your screen, you'll see down here, 395 PMP all day. So that means, in effect, if you buy your early bird and you'll pay your £13.96 and your 395 postage, and then you come back later on and order anything else, we're not going to charge any more postage. Even if you order the brand new Elna Atelier um, embroidery machine that's coming up later on, um, no extra postage. So it's like having one payment of 3.95, then PMP free for the whole of the rest of the day. And you can come back as many times as you like and just keep ordering and we won't, uh, we won't charge you any more for your postage. If you'd like to get in touch, by the way, I've got uh, visitor posts open on my phone. Um, so if you go to Facebook and go to the Sewing Street TV page, if you'd like to send a comment or a picture or ask a question or just say hello, let me know what you're doing, are you new to us? Um, have you just started sewing? Are you teaching somebody how to sew? What are you sewing? I could ask questions all hour, but come, come and ask yours. Come and be part of the show. Um, now, already with our early bird, well done. A quarter of the entire stock has sold out already. This may well be another one that sells out in 15 minutes. 100% cotton, two and a half meters by 112 centimeters. And again, um, you're getting half a meter for absolutely um, now this is pre-cut so if you wanted to line curtains you're going to need to go for a few and join them together so if you ordered two you'd get two two and a half meter lengths um, but there's so much you can do with two and a half meters you could easily line curtains with these and it's a lovely soft color it's a silvery gray I just think it's going to be really useful in your stash so even if you haven't got a, a plan at the moment oh half of the stock sold out now go on Go and order, go on, if you want to, go and order now because you're going to miss out. So stop listening to me for a second. Pick up the phone lines and dial 0800 001 4433 or go online and order that way because after barely five minutes, half the stock's gone. Give it another five minutes, I think I'll be coming back to say it's sold out. Well done you for getting up and getting a bargain. Oh, you can order as many as you like as well. It's not limited to one per customer. You can order as many of those pieces as you want. 
So what are you going to do with it? Well, it's a bit plain, isn't it? Kind of like a pattern on that grey fabric. We've got textile pens for you. This is going to be so much fun with the kids. Um, because you can draw on the fabric, these are water soluble, so you can draw on fabric and if it all goes wrong, give it a wash and it comes out again. But when you let the pens dry for six hours and then iron it on the back of your fabric, it becomes permanent. So how about those old pillowcases? They, you don't have to be sewing something, get them drawing on their pillowcases. Um, old shirts and things like that, t-shirts, let's decorate some t-shirts. Or, or tea towels, if you've got a spare bit of fabric, then you could have them drawing on the fabric and then make a little purse or a drawstring bag out of them. So much you can do with the pens. Or if you've got some really lovely fabric that, that is quite plain, no reason why you can't colour it in. So you can become your own fabric designer if you like. So let's have a go. And you've got loads of colours here as well. So I'm thinking purple's nice. Maybe have a bit of pink. Have a bit of green. And we've got a red. We've got a whole rainbow of colours. Um, I don't know how many there are. 20. 20 in total. And should we have a bit of patterned? So if you've got a kind of a patterned fabric, but it's quite plain, you can just colour it in. Oh, colouring in. Um, isn't it so therapeutic? Couldn't you just sit and do this for ages? Um, the pens have actually got marked on them a thin tip and a thick tip. Um, so you can, you can do some really fine work. Oh, I could do this for ages. How long have we got on the show? So th three hours to go. I might, I might just complete this one then. Um, but again, if you change your mind, then wash it out. If you like it, leave the ink to dry for about six hours and then iron it from the back. Oh, you get the idea, you don't want to sit and watch me colouring in. Um, but I'm thinking with the kids as well, just a plain piece of fabric, and it could be an old tablecloth or anything, you know, don't go out and buy anything special. Um, and maybe get them to write down, I don't know, their experience, what are they doing at the moment? Um, so they could be, we're having breakfast, so we can do a, a breakfast cereal bowl. Got some stripes down there. On a plate. With a spoon and colour it all in and then have the names written underneath. This is like, like um, a, a fabric diary, if you like. Um, what do you see when you look out the window? The other, we saw a double rainbow, which was amazing. Look how clear these are as well. I haven't got the right colours for rainbows. So red and yellow, pink and green, orange, purple and blue. I'm not going to sing a rainbow. <laughs> Two. But again, names, stories, messages. I, I think when, when something is on cloth like this, you hang on to it, don't you? Um, so all of the kind of things that your kids did at school or nursery that you stick on the fridge um, and then they end up getting a bit tatty and, and put in the bin. Why not get them doing that same thing on fabric and keep it forever? Oh, look. So I'm going to stop it now. But you get the gist. Um, so cotton fabric works best, or a natural fabric would work best. That does look like a five-year-old's done it, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> Might have a play later on. <laughs> so 20 pens in total, all the colours of the rainbow, for just £12.99. pounds. I think that is going to be hours of fun. But again, if you are um, the budding artist, it's not just about the kids. You could be sitting there colouring in uh, or sketching um, your, own, uh, your own pictures. I'm wondering as well, because these are, um, they wash away with water before you iron them. I wondered if you could blend them with a paintbrush and some water and have, um, Jim, I might have a play with that. I'm sure they'll be back. And, um, and see if you can use them like watercolours. Yeah, if, you, if you draw, say, a flower, I'll have a play later on. If you drew a flat like that and then put a bit of water on it and blended it a bit, you could have that watercolour kind of look, couldn't you? Because the, the ink will bleed into the fabric. 
lots of ideas for you. OK, £12.99. You're getting 20 really, aren't you? Because they're double-ended um, for your £12.99. So again, if you'd like to order, 0800 001 3 or take a look on the website. If you can't stick around all morning, then uh, do take a look on the website because everything that we have over the next few hours is there already. So go to sayingstreet.com. We have Bonderweb. Now, we brought you Bonderweb for the first time uh, last week on a roll, and it sold out completely. But this is exactly the same, just on a smaller piece. Um, so it's 120 by 175. 175 millimetres, from centimetres to millimetres. Um, so 120 by 17 and a half, that works out at for £2.99. And this is perfect for those of you who love your applique. Um, the thing that I love about the, the Bonder Web is that when you're... I use my 505 spray an awful lot and that's repositionable. Um, but eventually that will lift up. So with the larger pieces of applique, it's not going to hold the centre down. So even when you've sewn around the edge, there is a chance that the two pieces could, could part, particularly after washing. Um, so when you're using Bonder Web, it's an iron-on adhesive that sticks the fabric permanently, the applique permanently to your fabric. So it has a paper backing on it and then like a, a waxy side, that's the adhesive. That irons onto the wrong side of your fabric and then you can draw on it. So if you're, you know, if you're freehand drawing applique pieces or you're tracing or you're doing letters and things like that, um, you can draw on the paper backing, cut out your fabric, peel away the backing and then iron that onto another piece of fabric. And it's pretty permanent. So if you don't want to do satin stitches all around the edge, um, I, I would, if this is going in the wash, I would sew. That, somehow around the edge um, but Bonderweb helps to prevent the applique from fraying as well so if you're only doing a straight stitch or if you're hand stitching then this is going to give you a really good addition um, and again £2.99 I'd go for a few of those if I were you good and quite a big sheet but I don't think you can ever have too much you know if you, if you do do a lot of applique then this is absolutely perfect for you so £2.99 is your price for that one and Oh, oh, I need to go back again really quickly to the early bird. We've got two left. That was, that was record time, isn't it? That's just after 10 minutes and we're about to sell out. Um, you can order now, but please, I would order on the phone lines. You're going to find that quicker on 0800 001 4433. Um, one lucky person or two lucky people are going to be the last ones to get hold of today's early bird. Well done to you. This is why it's worth getting up early in the morning, isn't it? Mind you, 8, eight o'clock isn't that early, you know, when when you get up at four. All uh, right, we have wadding. <laughs> Is that what we've got left of that? So we've got two ounce and four ounce wadding. You will have a big bag full. If I show you the four ounce wadding, that has nothing to do with me as my nose grows. Um, 40 inches by 40 inches, let me just check that is exactly the same. Well, there you go, it don't say. 40 inches square, yes. So I can show you how big it is in this one. Put my scissors back in my scissor stand. I'll put, I'll put those safely there on my scissor stand. This is the size that you're going to get. Okay, so you've got about, about a square metre there. That's actually the four ounce, but I can show you the difference between the two. Um, so they're, they're both the same thickness, but the two ounce is thinner. Now it's polyester, so I wouldn't use this for a quilt. Um, a quilt that you're going to sleep under, but it's perfect for things like wool hanging, um, if you're going to do a little bit of chop and toe. Um, if you're making things like um, cushion covers, I always like to put a bit of wadding behind the front of a cushion uh, cover, particularly if I'm going to quilt into it or sew into it, just to give it a really scrunchy, um, luxurious kind of feel. Um, so weight-wise, that's entirely up to you. The two ounces is just that little bit lighter. But this, uh, this is so much more affordable than wadding. So if you are making something like a wall hanging, um, maybe a table runner or some mats to go over the back of your sofa, and you don't want to spend all of that money on waddings, then this is going to be perfect for you. It's all washable as well, um, but it's just not one of those things that you want to make a cop quilt out of. 
And there's something that you might want to make a cop quilt out of coming up tomorrow. But this is only £3.99 for that size. So compared to your wadding, batting, the heirloom, the expensive stuff, this is an awful lot more affordable. So, and, and Jim, you, you could use this for snow at Christmas time. Look at all that's left of that. I don't know. Did I, did I use that? I'm going to blame John. So that's your two ounce at £3.99. That's how it's going to come to you, but it will be full. That's the one. So that's how it's going to come to you. So premium polyester, premium meaning that it, it is soft. Um, but more importantly, it's washable as well. So it's not going to shrink. Polyester can't do that. Um, so, and it's going to keep its shape there as well. So that's, that's really useful. It's so affordable as well, isn't it? So that's your four ounce. Have a look on the website for that one. Okay. What we do have down here as well is something else that's brand new for you and something that I do use an awful lot of, um, which is toy filler. Now this is a high lot, I'm, I'm going to have to open this one as well. There is toy filler and there is toy filler. I've ordered toy filler online before now thinking I've got a bargain and it feels like I've ordered something that I'm going to scrub saucepans with. This isn't like that. What you have is tiny coils, which gives it a real springiness. And this is incredibly soft as well. So this doesn't feel like something that you're going to scrub pans with. Um, it's really, really soft. And that's important if you are making toys that children are going to play with to keep their softness. What I also like about it is the density. Um, now, sometimes with a toy filler, it can come, you know, it's lumpy. You get really thick bits and really thin bits. This is really easy to separate. And honestly, I use so much toy filler. I've made a lot of toys um, recently from ragdolls to teddy bears. Um, I've been making little felt projects for a children's channel on YouTube. Um, and it's really important to have a toy filling that just feels really nice. I'll tell you what else you use it for as well. If you're making cushion covers, particularly if you have um, a synthetic filled cushion pad, I don't, I don't like feathers myself, um, so I always go for the synthetics. And sometimes your cushion pads can be a little bit round in the corners. So when you put the pad inside the cushion cover, stuff this into the corners and it makes it nice and square. That's not a cheat's way. That's something that I was quite surprised when I, um, I did my upholstery course a few years ago. Um, when the cushion covers are, are put on, and those were a feather, um, they use this to stuff into the corners to keep their shapes. I, didn't, I thought that would be cheating, but no, that's, uh, that's what they do. So it's really nice and soft. I bought, I bought a, a big bag off the internet when I, was doing, when I started this toy making marathon I seem to be doing um, a few weeks ago. And, and honestly, it's so scratchy. I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. That, that would be for stuffing corners, maybe. But this is soft and it's bouncy and it keeps its shape. And what I like as well, so I know it's toy filling, but there's an awful lot to say about it. Um, what I also like about it is um, the fineness. If you're making uh, Luna Lapa and if you're making Tilda dolls and you've got those very, very skinny legs, you can pick very fine pieces without it all going clumpy. Because if you are stuffing stuff, stuffing stuff like that, then it's important to do tiny bits at a time. Because if you put a big lump in there, you'll have a, you'll have a knee and no, no substance in the ankle. It'll all get knotted up halfway through. So that's, that's really loads of benefits. And it's washable as well, of course. So it's not going to shrink and it's not going to clump. This is what it's been designed for. So it's 100% polyester, um, but it's really, it's a really nice one. Oh, it's really soft. <laughs> I'll do that when you get it home. Oh, that feels so nice. Um, 399, 250 grams. So you've got a good size for a Ted. Um, I'd go for a couple. You'd be surprised, actually, how much, particularly if you want a, a toy that's stuffed really tight, you'll be amazed how, how far this doesn't go. It compacts down really well. So if you wanted a firm stuffing, you've probably got enough for one toy there. One, one average size teddy bear. Um, so 100% polyester, high loft, which means that it's got lots and lots of spring to it. But again, the most important thing is just the way that it feels. 
If you've got a scratchy toy filler, you're going to have a scratchy toy. It's not going to feel very nice, but this is beautifully soft. You can see that. And again, multi-order those. Brand new for you today. It's the first time we brought you toy filler. So I know where I'm going to be going for mine from now on. <laughs> and 3 99 is a really good prize there as well. Um, grippy spray we have. We've, we've been selling so many sprays lately. And I think it's one of those things, um, particularly with the Odif sprays, I always think this is one of those characters out of Frozen. Um, they would have to do so many different sprays. Um, there's 404, 505, 202, 303, 606, I'm sure there's a 707, and Grippy. And they've all got different purposes, but I think it can be a little bit overwhelming to see all these different sprays. And, well, I don't, I don't know what they're all for. Grippy spray you're going to find really useful if you have plastic templates or acrylic templates. If you have rulers, not with creative grids because they've already got their grippy bits on them. But if you have a ruler that tends to slip, then use your grippy, pre grippy, pray. grippy spray to prevent slippage. So... This goes on the back of your template. So at the moment, it can move around. Um, particularly, I wouldn't be so worried about um, things like this because you can put your hand on there and draw through. But if you're using a ruler and a rotary cutter and you put your hand on there and it slips, it's one thing with a pen, it's another thing when you slip with a rotary cutter. So you can slip into your fingers, but you can slip into your fabric, which is even worse. Because um, that's just a waste of fabric. Skin heals. Um, spray on the back. Just a light spray. And the most amazing thing is, you can't see it, you can't feel it. It just, it just feel, it's not sticky. You can actually feel it's almost rubbery kind of feeling. But then when you put it on your fabric, it doesn't move. It doesn't leave any residue on your fabric. It doesn't, it doesn't leave anything on... It, I, I don't know how it works. Um, it doesn't pick up the dust. It's not leaving anything sticky on here. You know, you're not going to be able to stick this on, onto the, the wall or something to store it. But when it comes to fabric, it just prevents it from moving. You don't need very much. You don't need to cover the whole of the template. You know, if you want to be frugal, maybe just to spray down the centre. But this is any kind of plastic or acrylic will just stop that slippage and give you a little bit more security. Um, security and accuracy. So there are other sprays like your 404 that are um, repositionable that will stick things to fabric but this this doesn't all it does is make your rulers a little bit more grippy and you know that goes such a long way you need very very little to spray on there um, it'll stay there as well you don't have to keep respraying it is it stays I was gonna say tacky it's not tacky um, it stays grippy <laughs> Um, so you don't have to reapply it every time you use it. It's not going to wear off onto your fabric. And it's only £6.99. So imagine the cost of all of those rulers that you have. You're basically making them more safe and more efficient by just giving them a little spray of grippy. So that was that one. Got any questions, by the way? Come and ask them. On Facebook would be nice. It's uh, Sewing Street TV. If you want to send a message, um, there's, there's a few ways you can message us on Facebook. And of course, we've got our Sewing Street fans page as well. But I've got Sewing Street TV open on the visitor page, uh, visitor posts page. So I'll get your message straight away if you come through that way. Another useful tool that you may have seen before and really not understand what it's all about is our hair marker. And this is used to put creases in fabric. So on the occasions where maybe you're cross-hatch quilting and you're a little bit wary of putting any kind of ink on your... Let me just iron, that's already creased. Uh, on your fabric. Um, I know a lot of quilters like to use water-erasable ink, but that means you've got to wet your quilt to take it away. Um, and some heat-erasable and... Um, in fact, even air and water erasable can stain on some fabrics. Those marks can come back again at some point. Um, so this may be your preferred way of drawing lines. I'm just trying to get the creases out of this because it looks like a... I just wanted to be plain so you can see where I'm marking. So instead of taking your pens, we'll have our ruler. 
and a hair tool and then just mark into the fabric and you'll see a line there. So I'm using the softer side of the ironing board. You don't need to, it just makes the indentations a little bit deeper. So you've got a really quick and easy way of marking fabric which simply irons away afterwards. What you're also making is like a score. So, for instance, if I'm hemming and I want to do a really fine hem, it's only a quarter of an inch. I find it easier when, when I'm hemming to press before I sew. So I'll be folding this over by a quarter of an inch. Let me get my iron. And oh, is that a quarter of an inch? I know you can get tools for this. But that that's that's not actually too bad, but my fingers are getting a bit hot. But when you have your hair marker, I can do a really accurate quarter of an inch line along the fabric. So there's my score line and then fold it over. Now it's not marking as in putting a stain on there. That's literally, I mean look how easy that is. That's a perfect quarter of an inch fold all the way down. So it's like a score, so it's like a crease. And then if I needed to fold over, let's do a quarter of an inch, then a three quarters of an inch seam. That is as easy as it's going to be. And that's perfect. It's so easy. So same kind of, of motion, if you like, as your rotary cutter, but you can bring it towards you. Um, it's also got a point a bit on, on the end. So if you're turning out um, bag bases and things like that, if you're turning something through, you can push the point out. That's not a sharp point like a pair of scissors, so it's not going to go through your fabric. And the round side, if you're turning through maybe, again, a bag flap um, or a round collar, then you can um, kind of squish this into the corner of the seam to give you a nice finish to it. So it's a really useful little tool. You can hang it up as well um, for only £5.99. and pence. I think that the, the, the reason for its being is for the scoring of your fabric and the creasing of your fabric. And it's such a quick way of doing that because it's only one step. You're going to iron your work when you're finished anyway. So that's when the creases will disappear. Um, but there's no extra step to take away your ink or even chalk, even with chalks, you can have to brush them away. Um, but that's just a one step, put the crease in, iron the crease out. That's two steps, isn't it? It's a two step process. <laughs> and it'll never run out of ink. <laughs> and that's only five pounds and 99 pence. Um, what else should we show you? Oh, we've got some quilters pencils. If you do want to mark your fabric, this, these are chalk pencils and the pencil sharpener. So you're getting four all together, two silver and two of the white. So you've pretty much got every colour covered. So this has been opened before, I'm sure. Um, you've also got pencil caps in here as well. So they won't be sharpened when you get them home. I'm going to sharpen a silver one because I've got pale fabric on there. So you've got your little pencil sharpener there. It's a pencil sharpener with its own bin look. It's a tidy sharpener. Oh, bear with me, might be a while. <laughs> Thought this was a good idea at the time. Oh, there we go. That's it. And then you've got your cap because this is chalk, so it's going to be quite soft. So we don't want that to get broken. So your cap goes on there. But again, you've got a nice solid line and with it being chalk, it's simply going to brush away like big noughts and crosses. So two of the silver and two of the white. Perfect again for quilters, dressmakers, transferring um, uh, pattern markings. And I love the fact that they've even thought about those little caps on the pencils as well. So try not to drop them, keep them nice and safe, keep them in the packet if you can. 
keep the caps on them so that you don't waste that chalk by having it um, having it break. If you drop that on its point, then it, it's, it's very soft. Um, and these are actually water soluble as well. So if you don't find that they brush away too easily, then just use a damp sponge, and then you can just wipe away um, the rest of the um, the rest of the markings. Um, so just warm water. Don't need soap, and you don't need to put them in the wash. Just a damp sponge will take those markings away really well. And those are just £12.99. You know, you call, they call these quilters' choice. If you're not a quilter, I, I wish I wouldn't label things like this. I'm going to stand on my soapbox now. Um, they're marking tools. Um, if you are making homewares, if you're making curtains, if you're certainly if you're dressmaking, there's an awful lot of markings to put on a, uh, to transfer from a dress pattern onto, onto fabric. Um, so I think they should just, they should call it the seamstress's choice personally because it's the pencil doesn't tell oh, hang on, hang on, you're making a dress no I'm not I'm a quilter's choice <laughs> I'm not going to work on that dress <laughs> um, but if you're drawing out dots and again you can get a really accurate line when you're doing so if it's just the the little dots that you have for you know end of zip placements and things like that I'm rebelling against the quilting aspect. Um, but if you're just transferring dots, if you've got your notches and you just want to put a little mark at the side instead of cutting out triangles, um, this is absolutely perfect for you. So they're marking chalking chalk pens for fabric. Four of, for your £12.99. Right, let's go back to our pens. So what are you thinking? You're going to get the kids involved. I've had both my granddaughters sewing over the last few weeks. We've got as far, I say sewing, we've got as far as pieces of felt and needles going in, pulling through, turning around and going back out. So, oh, my eldest granddaughter, um, she, she's, she was five this month. Um, <laughs> she said to me, it's the first time she'd sewn. So she knows that I, I sew and everything, but I was saying about what stitches are and what they do. So I say, no, it's not just putting the needle in and out and making a pretty line. Stitches are really important. So you see lines on here, the line on your cardigan, that's a stitch line because that's been sewn together. I say, you know, that line on your dress down the side, that's, that's a stitch line. And she said, Grandma, have you got stitch lines on your face? I'm going to call it, they're not wrinkles, they're not crow's feet, they're stitch lines. I have stitch lines and I've earned every one of them. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> as my, my granddaughters will be on my design team one of the days, I'm sure. She's learning about mammals as well. And um, mam mammals have hair and mammals have fur. So, Grandma, you're a mammal because you have hair. Granddad Bruce, her, her other granddad is bald. Granddad Bruce isn't a mammal. He hasn't got any hair. So what is he then? He's a reptile. <laughs> right, so double-ended pens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really lucky to have the granddaughters with me. I know so many of you are missing yours like crazy. The number of posts that you read on social media about um, the hugs that are being missed by grandparents. So hopefully it won't be too long before you can have those back again. But meanwhile, how about being your own fabric designer? So if you're making things for them, little gift ideas may be, um, why not design your own fabric and personalise things? So um, I think these are a great idea for kids, but I just think they're such a nice idea for the grown-ups as well. Because you could be making birthday cards and put these in an aperture. Um, you could be making little pouches, little drawstring bags maybe and then you can really personalise them. What should we go for? I 
No magic. I know <laughs> it's only a simple flower. You've got so many colours in here that you can literally colour everything in, um, shade it maybe. I haven't tried them with water yet, but I don't see why it shouldn't work. If you decide, actually, no, I made a mess of that, then you can um, pop this in the washing machine. It'll all wash away, but it does become permanent after you've ironed. So you need to leave these to dry for about six hours and then, um, and then give it a, an iron from the back. And that should, I wonder if you can, oh, you can blend them, look. Oh, look at me. And then that becomes permanent. And so it's not going to wash out when you wash them again. So if, you, if you're not the sewer, then um, how about um, just drawing on something that you already had? I'm thinking about you know, pillowcases or towel labels. Oh, you could label your own quilts with these, couldn't you? Just write names on the back. That does blend really well. Only while the ink's wet, I'm supposing. That should do it at the end there. So they're a little bit of fun, but if you are the artist, I think you can do some really beautiful pictures with this. Maybe um, free motion embroidery over the top. Maybe a nice finish to it. Or quilt it. Put this onto something, I mean, a bit of wadding. That polyester wadding would be great behind there, and then just quilt over the top of it. Getting a bit carried away now, aren't I? While the ink's wet, it is actually blending. I didn't realise it to do that. That's a bit dark. Is that a bit bright? No, that's a bit darker. Really, I'm talking to myself now. There's something about colouring in as well, which I think is just so relaxing, so rewarding, so satisfying. One of those pastimes that just, you know, the, the hours will fly by and you could be creating something wonderful that you could add a few extra stitches over the top if you wanted to. There you go. So you could be drawing on here, quilting over the top, adding your own designs, colouring in fabrics that um, blend that a little bit. See, it just blends. Amazing. Colouring in fabrics that have just like a monochrome pattern to them. Making gifts for the rest of your family, something that's really, really quick and enjoyable to do. But I love the idea of your kids just drawing and writing and embellishing things, because you keep those things forever, don't you? Put this back, got 20 of those all together. Oh, now, um, Hannah, our producer who's producing from home was saying that um, one of her neighbours has decorated a banner that they're hanging in the street. That's a nice idea. Or you could just do bunting um, and write messages on there. Because when it rains, I was like, what it was this morning when I was driving, it wasn't running nice at all. Um, it's not going to wash out if you iron it first. If you don't iron it, you'll have a very colourful pavement. Um, so that's uh, £12.99. <laughs> Excuse the green all over my fingertips. That was a bit of messy crafting, wasn't it? That's not going to come off. Do apologise. Um, Twelve pounds ninety nine for twenty pieces. They're double ended. They've got the markings on them to show you which is a thick end and which is a thin end. So you can do some really fine work. Um, Christine sent me a message. Hi, Christine. She says, "Morning, Debbie. Nice to have you on this grey day. Can you give any hints as to tomorrow's surgery topics?" Well, do you know we've had such a wide variety? We're going to do a bit on um, bias binding. We're going to do a little bit on um, snipping threads, as in unpicking threads. But I've got I've got a new tool for you, which is really handy there as well. Um, I've had loads of questions on bias binding. We've got a few dressmaking ones as well. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. So if you've got anything you'd like to ask, then um, then do pop along, pop along and ask it. I had a lot of messages asking which sewing machine to buy. Can't I can't tell you which sewing machine to buy. I can't tell you that. Go for a big brand name, though. We'll, we'll cover it loosely in the, in the show tomorrow. Sewing Surgery is 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. So if you go to the Sewing Street TV Facebook page, there is a, I think there's an event there. So you can pop your question underneath there. If you can do that today, uh, just in case I need to bring anything special into the studio with me tomorrow to answer your questions would be, would be rather nice. Um, right. Oh, we need to say a happy birthday. Hayley Marshall say, who's our head of TV, it's her birthday today. So happy birthday, Hayley. You're not working from home, are you, today? Oh. 
Um, it's also jewellery makers that I <laughs> had a moment this morning. Um, we share our, our studio with, with jewellery maker. We share our website with jewellery maker at the moment as well. You may have noticed that. So we were all part of the same team. And it's their birthday today. I, I, <laughs> I nipped out the studio to do my hair before I came, came on air uh, to bump into Jenny Cleary doing a live Facebook saying happy birthday to her. So, oh, hi. <laughs> happy birthday, jewellery maker. <laughs> Then I got pushed out the ten and a half metres away, don't be sure. Yes, it's their birthday too. Right. This Osnaberg fabric has been, oh God, flying ever since we brought it to you. Price-wise, at £2.50 for half a metre, I'm not surprised. It's like a, having an early bird permanently. Um, this is a, it's a seeded cotton. It's natural seeded cotton. The little brown flakes you see are the seeds, so they're cracked cotton seed pods, um, which gives it a really nice organic look. It's unbleached, so this is its natural colour. It's quite a loose weave, um, so it's easy to hand embroider. It behaves a little bit like linen, but doesn't crease quite as much. So if you're going to embroider, this is going to be really easy to sew through. Through. But at £2.50 for the amount you're getting, um, what a great bag lining that would make, what a great bag that would make. Um, I've shown you previously some of the cushion covers that I've made um, mixing together different textures of fabric. So this, along with the linen, along with lace, um, mix it with things like um, hessian, fine hessian would work really well. But it's, it's such a lovely fabric to work with as well. It's the kind of thing that you could use for twirls. So again, if you're a dressmaker and you don't have scrap fabric to use, then this is going to be such an affordable way of, uh, of making up a twirl. It's nice and wide as well. So you've got 140 wide on this, 112 wide on this one. 112. Um, and you get all of that. That's what you're getting for £2.50. So if you are lining a bag, that would be a really big tote bag. Are you making bags for life? I don't, I don't mind paying for a bag for life when I go to a supermarket, but I don't want to advertise them. So, I mean, that's all very well, having a bag that you can reuse and reuse and reuse, but it's free advertising and they, I, I don't get commission. Um, so I'd rather, I'd rather make my own. So if you just used uh, this with a French seam down the side, um, that's going to make a really nice sturdy bag. Use the same fabric for the handle as well. And it's that, it's that same kind of fabric. You can buy bags like this. In fact, it's nicer quality than a lot of bags that you can buy like this. Um, but it's just got a really nice feel to it. I love that organic kind of feel of this look. It's very, very rustic, very natural. And very only £2.50. That is such a good price. Um, this is um, per half metre as well. So if you need more, you know, that, that's not very much to make a twirl unless you're making a mini skirt. So if you do need more, it will come all joined up in one piece. So if you wanted four metres, order eight of those. OK, we've got books for you too. That handmade, this is one of my favourite books. I love the photography, I love the projects, but I love the, uh, the fabric choices that the author's chosen as well. So in here, you've got 20 projects, which are all quite simple, but with lots of different techniques as well. There's even a cat collar. So things for yourself and things for the home, an explanation about tools and things in here as well. And old fabric handles, leather handles. So a little fold over pouch, that's going to be useful. But things like this, I'm just looking at that, that design thing. I could do that with those felt pens. So you could actually copy as long as you can copy. But this sort of hand drawn, doesn't it? So you can make your fabric. You do, in fact, use your Osnabrück fabric, draw your design on there and then make a pouch out of it. All of your instructions and step by steps are in here. You have to put the zip in. Little pleated pouch. And... Clutch bags, nice and easily explained as well. I do, I do like a simple explanation myself. That's a nice bag, isn't it? With my letterbox zip. I call it a letterbox zip. And larger tote. So that would be nice with the Osnabrück fabric and then a pattern fabric on the top. And I'm, th I'm just bear with me a second because I'm thinking that in the background would be rather nice and then how about that on a pocket? 
That would work, wouldn't it? And it also means, I mean, this is a really cheap, as in inexpensive fabric. This is a quality mode of fabric, but you're not actually using so much of that because it's only the pocket on the front. So inexpensive makes expensive go further. And again, you've got all of your step-by-steps in here as well. Make it personal, make it your own. Become your own bag designer. What else have we got? Scrappy placemats. Again, you could use your pens to draw all of this, couldn't you? Coasters, simple projects, great for a beginner because there's lots of techniques to learn as well. Oh, is that tying a quilt? Oh, and we've got bigger things there as well, so you do have little quilts. Storage to hang on your wall, always useful. Walls are a great place to store stuff because um, generally they're, they're quite bare, aren't they? Your floor and your tabletops tend to get very, very full of baskets and bags and boxes, so wall storage is a really good idea. And for your pet, look, little collar. I don't know what my dog would do if I put a collar on her. She wears a harness normally. And a catnip fish. And then we've got the cat teepee. <laughs> I do have quite a big beefy dog with a very loud bark, but she is the softest creature. Her name's Bobbin, because that's appropriate. There we go. Um, so that's that handmade touch. Bobbin's actually in here somewhere, I think. There she is. She's a baby then. She's three now. So she's a, she's a little rescue. She's a, an American pit bull staffy cross. So she's twice the size of that now, but she's so soft, she's lovely. This is, this is my sewing room from my sewing room secrets book while we're here. <laughs> this is a book for a beginner. So if you're learning how to sew, if you've never sewn before, if you've never used a sewing machine, um, or if, you, um, if you're teaching somebody how to sew, we go right back to basics as in what you need. So that's why it's called Sewing Room Essentials. There are lots of things as sewers that we would like, but all I'm covering in here are the things that you need, things to get going, things to get started. So an explanation of sewing machines, of sewing machine feet and the job that they're going to do. But again, only the ones that you need. There's no gathering, there's no ruffle of feet or no, just, the, just the basic ones that you're going to need. Um, an explanation of needles. That's something else we're going to cover tomorrow in surgery. And um, the tools that you need. Then we're going to move on to techniques. So fabric terminology, you know, what, what is a, a fabric roll and a fabric strip and a pre-cut and a fat quarter? Wadding, something else we're going to cover in surgery tomorrow. There are so many different types. It can be an absolute minefield out there. Different types of threads. But then we're going to move on to techniques. And for each one of the techniques that you're learning, there's a project. So there will be a project with applique, uh, with decorative stitches. Um, even the little heart pin cushion, it's got a pair of scissors inside it. Really great for a beginner, but I'll show you all of the different techniques that you're going to use. So you're going to make your own template, uh, snipping curves, cutting corners and a ladder stitch. That's my letterbox zip. And Oh, lots of explanations about zips and piping, but then you're using the zip and piping to make a cushion cover. So that's my old boy. That was Alfie. Um, shearing elastic applique, then you're going to use both of those to make a little girl's dress. So you know, free, a free motion embroidery, you can then make a drawstring bag. Um, so it's learning techniques and then using the techniques to create 10 projects. The bolster pillar, I like that one. I love the colours. But you're learning pleating, you're learning pin tucking and gathering and making drawstring. And actually how to measure things as well. So there's a little bit about quilting as in what it is in a basic description. Because this is the first in a series of books of mine called Sewing Room Secrets. This one's machine sewing. Because the next one is Sewing Room Secrets Quilting which I got my advanced copy yesterday. So hopefully we're going to be launching here first week in June. Um, right, let's have a look at some other things that you need. Pins. Pins are really important. We can be very fussy about pins. 
Should have opened it before. Shan't open them now. Um, these are glass head pins. So glass head pins in lots of different colours means that they stand out against uh, no matter what kind of fabric you're using, what kind of print and colours of fabric. But it also means that when you drop them on the floor you can see them. Um, I have a laminated floor in my sewing room so I can sweep things up or whiz around it with a magnet if I drop any pins. Um, but if you're dropping pins into a carpet they can disappear very easily. So you've got nice bold uh, colours on the head so that you can actually see them. There's 200 pieces in there for you, £3.99 and they're quite fine. Um, but I, I do like, um, I like, I like long pins and pin, if you, if you're dressed, oh, no matter what you do, if you're right-handed, well, I'm right-handed, I like to pin from the right-hand side with the pins all facing in that way. So when I'm going underneath the sewing machine, I can take them all out really quickly and pop them straight into my pin cushion. So I'm not going to, I don't take them out and put them on the table. I take them straight out and stick them in a pin cushion. Um, so apart from anything else, so I know where they are, so I'm not losing them. Um, so pins, really important. Pin cushion is really important as well. So that's going to keep you organised. So you can stick your pins and your safety pins. Um, you're going to get a navy one, actually. I've only got a black one here. So just the same, but in navy. And it's a good size. I like to organise my pins as well, which may seem a bit sad. Um, but it, I, I just like to be organised, so I'll have the, the pins on one side. Occasionally, if I have time to spare, I will, I will put them in colour order as well. But I, I know, I know. Um, needles on the other side, and then maybe safety pins in the bottom here, so you can keep them all nice and separate. I like to know exactly where my needles are in the pincushion, because needles can go straight in and disappear. And then when you're foraging around for them, you can spike yourself. So I do like to have a, a dedicated area for pins. And I like a pincushion that doesn't roll all over the table as well. I mean, apples and pears look lovely as pincushions, but you try stabbing them and they're on the floor before you know it. So I like a pincushion with a good base as well, which you've got here. Oh, now then, something that we brought to you the other week is our fabric slasher. Um, oh, hi, Jen. Jenny brought some of the cedar cotton and fab for everything, as you said. Plus, she made a bag using the canvas fabric from Sewing Street. The canvas fabric is lovely, isn't it? We have the fabric slasher. Well, it sounds like a superhero. Fabric slasher. This looks like a rotary cutter, but it's not. Um, the blade doesn't actually spin. It's purely designed to create things like this. Which is huge. You can do smaller projects with it. But basically, this is four layers of fabric. Um, three of them the same on the top. You can use different colour fabric if you wanted to. Um, and you sew them together in strips half an inch wide and then just cut through the top three layers. And that's important because if you cut through all four layers, you've just got lots of strips of fabric. Um, because this is cut on the bias, it doesn't actually fray, it goes fluffy. With this cushion, I used a scrubbing brush. In fact, I didn't use a scrubbing brush. I used a wire brush to get it to go really fluffy. Um, on your instructions or on the videos on YouTube from Clover, it'll tell you to pop them in the washing machine. I couldn't wait. So you'd be surprised how much you can scrub this without it without it spoiling. But again, diagonal, 45 degree, bias cuts don't actually fray, they just fluff up. So it gives a lovely faux chenille kind of look. Now you've got two um, ends on this, if you like. So that's the long one. So that goes underneath straight lines like this and just cuts. And then you've also got a short attachment. So this will go, same blade, but you just replace the long thing with the small one. And the smaller one is for going around curves. So you can create a, a curve design if you wanted to as well. Have we got time to show you that, do you think? Are we running out of time? Should we do it? Should we do it? I'll just do a little bit on a small piece of fabric just to show you how it works. I shan't measure it for now. Um, so let's do... Ooh, one... That cushion, by the way, was with the, um, the peonies panels that we have for you. There's three of them. That I'll just show you how big, because they're huge. You get three of those and a metre and a half of fabric as well. So you've got plenty enough with a bit left over to make a cushion just like the one that I made there. Or I'm thinking, because you can use different coloured fabrics behind it, I'd actually use those to make three cushion covers and use some of my own fabric um, just to make it get that little bit further. So you put your plain fabric on the back 
and ooh, and one, two, three layers of different coloured or tonal fabric on the top. And then we're going to sew at a 45 degree angle. So I'll just stick my foot pedal in there. Don't need the foot pedal, do we? And sew at half inch increments. Measure these and mark them um, when you get them home. So you could use your, um, your chalk markers on this would be ideal. So I'll just do a couple of rows just so you get the idea. So that's, this is the time consuming bit when you're making your cushion cover. Fun bits coming up. Important that you go in diagonal lines as well because again if you if you're going to cut across the weave of the fabric or across the grain of the fabric, you're just going to get lots and lots of fraying, which is fine if that's the look that you want, but um, this looks so much nicer. Now, to help things along, I'm going to cut not into the bottom fabric. So have your bottom fabric a little bit bigger and just snip into each one of those channels. But remember, not through the bottom. That's the difficult thing if you're doing these with a pair of scissors. And then the long bar underneath the, um, the blade goes in between the layers. And then you, oh, I'm on the off bit. So do bear with me, I'll just turn this around. Because the blade doesn't rotate, I, do you know, I put this on this morning, I haven't put it on properly. Bear with me. Um, because the blade doesn't actually rotate, as it blunts, you'll need to turn this around. Right, there's a little gauge inside here that needs to click in place on there. All right. Then your blade goes on, be careful with that. Then the cap goes on. And they all kind of click together. You won. And then that goes in there. And then the cap goes on the back. Every time. It's normally scissors. Oh, there it is. It's normally scissors. <laughs> Still there. Lose scissors, I lose pins, I don't go anywhere, I don't do anything, but I just lose everything. Okay, and then that screws back up again. That's how you change from one to another as well. Then you can simply loosen that slightly, and this clicks. So you can turn the blade around. There, see, can you hear the click? Right, and then tighten it up. Okay, then we go under here, in between the layers, and you slash. And in between here, and make sure I got through all of those layers, but not the bottom one, and slash. If I was doing that with a pair of scissors, you can see the difference if I just try and cut down the side. I'm having to be really careful that the point of the scissors doesn't go through the base fabric, and it takes ages, but with this one, again, you just put it inside that and go slash, and then you fluff it up. So, and again, you can be quite aggressive. So if you want to put it in the washing machine and be gentle, that's fine. But otherwise, if you just want to give that a ruffle, and as all these curl up and go fluffy, then you kind of expose the colours underneath. So if you've got a very dark next to a very bright, or maybe do black, white, black, white, black, white, that would look really striking. And then ultimately, you're going to expose the bottom fabric as well. So although you don't see a lot of them, actually, this is a great way as well. You know when you buy a whole pack of fabric, maybe you've bought a whole pack of fat quarters, and there's one or two that you're not so keen on, put those underneath and all you're going to get is a flash of the colour. So that's a nice way of using it. You know the, the fabric that you've had in your stash for ages that you think, I don't want to do with that one. Don't, I don't think I should have bought that one. So all you're going to see is that little flash of colour. Um, let me just give you a reminder of, say, a peony fabric. So you cut out, mm, now you've got three of these. Um, 
so you could make two huge cushion covers, put a couple of layers of your own fabric behind here before you slash it. You've got one and a half metres of the white anyway, so I think you've got enough to do two cushion covers. And then make a matching wall hanging. So I wouldn't slash the wall hanging, but lovely fluffed up... Well, you don't have to slash these, it doesn't come with the slasher. You're just getting three of those for your £22.99. Isn't that pretty? You know, it's a lovely watercolour kind of effect. Flowers that never die and you won't get hay fever off them um, for £22.99. But I think that's very stylish. No, no matter what kind of decor you have in your house, I think that's just going to fit in really well. It's really pretty. Yeah, massive. Uh, I think the 50 centre half metre square and three of them and your metre and a half backing fabric. You'll get a, a cream coloured backing fabric. It's a lot of fabric there for £22.99. So we put them together so that you could make massive cushions like this. You'll need a 20-inch cushion pad to go inside there. They're pretty big, um, but of course you can make whatever you like from them. I think wall hangings or pictures would be really nice. And that's a very affordable way of having big pictures on your walls. You could do a little bit of uh, embroidery over them, maybe some free motion embroidery. That would look nice as well. So you get all of those for £22.99. Right, that's everything that we have for you in this hour. Take a look on the website if you just joined us to see what you've missed. Um, and in the next hour, we're going to have a look at some uh, motor fabrics and I'm going to make a little drawstring pouch for you as well. So I'll see you again in about three minutes time. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck.
Hello and welcome back again. You're watching Sewing Street live this Sunday morning at nine o'clock. Lovely to have you company this morning. Um, now we can't do any sewing without fabric, can we? And uh, it's, it's always wonderful to have fabulous fabric in your stash. And that's what we've got for you in this hour. And I just thought I might make an origami little drawstring pouch because I haven't made one for ages and it's really simple and I think you're going to enjoy doing it if you haven't seen them before. I think you'd enjoy doing it if you have seen it before. Um, but let's take a look at the first bundle of fabric that we have. This is Moda Three Sisters. It's all Moda Three Sisters in this hour. Um, I love these designs. I think they're so rich and so opulent. And actually, it's not the designs that do that. It's the colours that have been chosen, I think. Um, in the ebony collection that we have here, You've got these rich golds, deep blacks, um, just a little flash of blue, but everything is very sophisticated about these range. Um, sorry, May Morris, not three sisters. What am I talking about? So May Morris is actually William Morris's daughter. And she was a, um, an embroiderer. Um, she was a, a wonderful textile artist and... Um, had a, a kind of a tapestry influence as well and I think you'll see that as we go through some of the fabrics. This is a complete bundle, there's four metres in total and each one of these pieces is 112 centimetres wide and half a metre in length. I love the border fabric because it's going to be really useful because you can actually cut those out and use them as borders but it's very um, delicate, tiny, tiny little prints with like a, a filigree, like very fine ironwork in the background and little delicate daisies. But these deep colours, I think, just give it such a, a classy, rich kind of look. I do say rich a lot with this fabric, but it really is. Look at the different tones of the black on this one. Deep charcoal grey with a black background. It's like looking through a mysterious wood at night time. And again, you've got half a metre of this one. Multiple flowers is really pretty. There's delicate little bluebells and daisies. But again, it's the detail. Look at the little tendrils swirling around there. There's so much attention to detail in this fabric. It's amazing. Then we've got the larger flowers. So these are irises. But look at the depth, the, you know, the, the shadows in the background. It really does like, like the looking into nighttime. And even the very, very fine lines on the petals, on the leaves. And it's such good quality of fabric as well. So you've got May Morris who comes up with these amazing designs. And then Moda's job is to bring you a really high quality of fabric for them to be printed on. So this one is the honeysuckle. We have honeysuckles in the garden. I love the honeysuckle fragrances. They go wild though, don't they? They're all over the place. And then there's the berries on the black background and on the sage background and then finally there we have tulips. So all four metres for £58.99. If you wanted them individually then have a look on the website because you can order those um, by the half metre as well so if you need more meterage or you don't want the whole collection. You know, if you're making a quilt, this is going to be amazing. But if it's any other kind of project, you know, if you're making bags and you just want um, a, a highlight or a little bit of embellishment from a fabulous fabric, or if you're dressmaking, you're probably not going to want all of those. So have a look if you just wanted to order them individually. They're probably not all available. Um, we've got very low stocks of some of them as well, but uh, you should be able to get most of them on our website. So that's the ebony collection. Then we have the golden sage. I'm going to use some of these to make my bag with, I think. So, again, you've got multiple flowers. So you've got all of the same prints. This is actually the same print look, but it looks very different in a different colour. Then there's the larger flowers with the irises. Tulips. Now look at, let me show you the other tulips. That was the ebony tulips. Doesn't that look so different? It's almost got um, a stained glass feeling to it, I think. And there's the honeysuckles. And so that was the one that was in the different shades of black previously. But this looks so bright. It's like literally gone from nighttime to daytime, hasn't it? And then the berries.
and there's the monochrome again. So that is your Sage collection for your £58.99. Then we have Crimson. It's not Crimson. Crimson, I always think of Crimson as really bright pillar box red. And this isn't, it's, us, it's deeper. But it's called Crimson, so if you wanted to order, you order Crimson. Four metres again in total for £58.99. So you'll now start to recognise some of the prints as they come through. Multiple flowers, large flowers, tulips, and the honeysuckle. And that's the, the striped. And your berries. Oh, and then this one is a little bit different. I'll open this up and show you. This is the stripes on cream. I'll show you the size. Of these as well, that's what your half a metre looks like. But this one is actually very special because this is based on a tapestry. And particularly in this colour, can you see the owls there, loads of details. This is exactly what that hanging looks like. It, it's almost like a photograph's been taken of it. I love the twigs down the edge, you see it's not a straight border. It's so clever, it's, it's, there's a lot of interest isn't there? When, when you look at this and just keep looking, you see something different every time. It took me a while to spot the owls. And is that a partridge? Didn't notice that one before. We have got, actually, the, um, the original picture for you to take a look at. And this is it. You see what I mean? It's exactly like this. OK, that's got the darker green um, background. Um, but look at the detail again. So it's just the same. So she worked, <laughs> I love the way that this been. She, she worked mostly in darn stitches. Um, and the hanging uses stem stitches to outline the work with lots of different coloured silks. That's what she specialised in was the silk embroidery. Um, lots and lots of different shades of different colours and the birds are embroidered through an additional cotton backing. So that's the original. And this is your fabric. It's nice to have a story, isn't it? To know where, where things come from and what the inspiration was behind it. Because, because so often you don't know. You'll, you'll pick out a fabric because you like it or the colour works for you. But to have a fabric with a story like that, I think, makes it really special. So again, that's all part of the Crimson Bundle. So this is where I'd, I'd, I was saying earlier about fabric, plain fabric, making your pattern fabric stretch a bit further. Um, and I mentioned the bundles of fabric that we have with everything is very densely, densely populated with print. So as you look at the whole collection together, um, particularly if you're quilting with these, they blend from one to another to another. So if you have, um, I wouldn't go for a red, I'd maybe go for the cream colour. If you have a plane of that kind of colour to break it all up, you could make a huge quilt out of these, really make those, those patterns go so much further. So that's your crimson bundle. We've got one more to show you, which is the indigo. Joe, you know, it may sound silly, I've said it before, but sometimes colours can look expensive. I think all of these colours look expensive. Now this one's already got quite a, a paler colour to break it up with, which is really useful to have in a collection like this. There's three and a half metres in this one, um, so seven pieces in total uh, for your £51.99. And pence. So there's the really deep, dark, mystical woods, I'm calling it. Um, but then we've got the... Um, Multi-flowers, assorted flowers. And this one, the bird really stands out. You may not have noticed that on the previous ones uh, in the different colours, but it, it's just amazing how different colours make them look. And the tulips, at first impression, they don't even look like tulips on those. They don't look like flowers until you look closely, do they? And then you have your stripe. And this one is the owl again. So it's just the same print as the, um, oh, there we go. As the last one I showed you with the crimson. But it, again, looks very, very different in the blue. 
So the, the flowers really pop out on this one, or the, the owl's eyes look. He does look like he's looking at you in the middle of the night. And the little partridge, if it is a partridge, seems to have disappeared altogether. There he is. And then finally, you've got your cream background. So three and a half metres there in total for £51.99. Let's just put this back. I want to give you a reminder before we move on anywhere of our Osnabrück fabric. Because it's really popular again. I wouldn't mix this with that. I think the Moda deserves something a little bit more special than this one. But this, at £2.50 for half a metre, I would stock up on. I'd be making my twirls from this because it's an affordable way um, to make a twirl if you're a dressmaker. Um, I'd be lining bags with it. I'd be making bags out of it. I wouldn't make clothing, I don't think. You could make a, could make a shirt, actually. You might make a nice shirt. Might be a bit scratchy. Um, but it does have a lovely drape. So it's a natural seeded cotton, that's what all of the brown flecks are. It's, it's quite a nice weave as well. It's a looser weave than cotton, but it's not like um, calico. It's a little bit more upmarket than calico. But again, at £2.50, if you need a practice, we make twirls in dressmaking, but there's no reason we can't make a twirl for a bag if you're a new sewer. So that could be your, your practice fabric, if you like. And if you order more than one half metre, they'll come in one piece. So if you needed larger, larger pieces, then that is achievable for you as well. So again, that's just two pounds and fifty pence. Oh, Janice, I got I got your message in the break, by the way. Thank you very much. That was a lovely story. It's been lovely to hear from you this morning. I uh, had a message from uh, Beverly. How can I view the day's offers for Sewing Street on Jewelry Maker? I only be able to seem to get twenty eight pages of items. Have we only got 28 pages of items? Maybe that's what the problem is. Um, when you go to, if you go to sewingstreet.com, it will take you to Jewelry Maker because we share the website, but it will take you to Sewing Street's homepage and you should see a video there. If you go on there now, you'll see a video of me. Um, and underneath you'll see um, all of the, the products that we have in the three hours that we have for you today. And then as you scroll down, there are uh, like chapters. So it'll take you to the fabrics page and the books and patterns page and the tools page. And if you click on one of those, you'll go into the appropriate pages there. Don't, really have, don't know how many pages there are. Um, 24. There are 24 pages on the main page. And then when you go into shop our catalogue, that will take you through into all of the other categories. So you'll see more pages there. So I hope... I hope that works. Maybe we haven't gone into the shop our catalogue. Oh, apparently we've been updated. We'll go through and we shall work that one out. So they do these things without saying a word, I know. Um, we shall get back to you, Barbara. Um, right, what shall we have a look at? Oh, oh. Got something new for you. Look, we've got a scissor holder. I'm blaming my tinnitus. Can't hear a thing. Pardon? Perfect for this job. Um, here is easy storage for um, for scissors and other tools as well. To be honest, I'll be putting pens in here. Um, if you don't have enough scissors to fill the whole thing, um, you've got 18 holes basically that you can use to store whatever you like. So maybe you have got your your pens and your pencils that you want to keep upright. It's not just about your scissors, but it keeps your scissors nicely organised. So if you've if you want to, if you don't like them just lying around, if you're worried about which way you're going to pick them up. Um, or if you just want to keep them out of the way of little hands. This is, I like the way you can see everything on here. You can identify where they are. Um, and if you are short on space, then that's probably going to be up against a wall so you can turn it around without reaching. Um, but it's just nice to keep everything like, everything sharp and dangerous all in one place. So enough room for 18 scissors. Um, it's made from a really lovely polished wood as well for your £18.99. So we'll just take those out because you've got little holes in the top if you're wondering if they'll fit whatever you want them to fit, which measure three quarters of an inch across. So 18 of those, and it's got like a turntable on the bottom, so it's a bit of a, a, bit of a lazy Susan kind of thing. And just pop those in there. 
I didn't know that King Henry VIII invented a Lazy Susan. So do we know who Lazy Susan was? It was one of his daughters. Who knew? <laughs> oh, I love a bit, of, a bit of nonsense like that. I wonder why she was lazy. Couldn't be bothered to turn her plate around, I suppose. <laughs> so, £18.99, based on an original design by King Henry VIII. And apart from that, it's really fun, isn't it? Hey, you should call it a scissor carousel, not a scissor rack. A rack, I always think, is something that hangs on the wall and you put spices in it. Um, but who am I to rename something that, uh, that royalty designed? <laughs> um, again, that's £18.99, brand new for you today. I do like to be organised. I do like storage. Um, I just think it, it makes you a better crafter when you're organised, I think. I don't like mess, personally. But I do like, I do like quality. We have um, some of the little snips that were in there. These are the Easy Action Soft Grip Snips. Um, they've got a lock on them and the spring springs open. So if you have um, dexterity problems, it's probably going to be the opening of the scissors that is most of the problem. So squeezing tends to be easier than opening. So when you have your scissors that you put your fingers through, it's that can, that's easy that can be a little bit more difficult. So this takes the hard work out of it. So they're, just, they're sprung, they're already open for you. Um, nice soft grip handles, which are left or right-handed. But these are really useful little snips if you are the cross-stitcher or the embroiderer. If you're snipping into curves and across corners, um, so any kind of genre of sewing, you're going to find a little pair of snips really useful. And they do have a lock on them, so they close shut for safety as well. And actually for storage, because they're a lot bigger when they're open. Are they not? So those are just £14.99. I would recommend if you're starting to sew or if you're building up a toolbox, you will need scissors, you will need shears, you'll need some paper scissors and you'll need a little pair of snips. So I'd recommend four pairs of scissors in total. I know you're going to want more. But as a basic, these are, are really important. There's always going to be a little snip that you need to make or a small thread that you need to cut. Maybe you have an embroidery machine um, which does jump stitches in between the stitches and you need to get right in there and snip them. A lot of embroidery machines will come with a little pair of scissors, but you know these are fiscal, so you've got great quality as well. You, you haven't got an embroidery machine. Are oh, you thinking about buying an embroidery machine? Now let me see what we can do for you. Um, how about an Elna embroidery machine um, with a £500 discount? That, that's, does that sound good? OK, we'll do that in the next hour, shall we? Just made a snap decision like that. Wasn't planned at all. See what I do for you? So our, our buyers are out there right now trying to source something that they can not £500 line up. It's, it's, it's just the power of being a presenter. $14.99 for your snips. Um, oh gosh, now our scissor rack, quarter of the stock sold out. We also have lots of stock when it's something new as well, but that's, uh, that's not going to last very long, is it? <laughs> you can fit up to 18 pairs of scissors in here and other bits and bobs as well. Keeps them organised and keeps them nice and tidy and safe as well. These ones are actually left-handed scissors. Again, they're Fiskars, um, so you've, you've got the quality there. And they're small shears. They're called general purpose scissors, as of course, well, all of them are. They don't know what they're cutting through. Um, I would generally keep uh, fabric away from paper scissors, unless it's dressmaking patterns. If it's tissue paper, I don't mind cutting through them. I think it would take an awful lot of tissue paper to blunt a pair of scissors. But generally, it's good form to have um, your dressmaking scissors separate. Um, so £14.99, these are left-handed, so a comfortable grip, and they're a nice size as well, 21 centimetres, which I think is 8 inches, just over 8 inches um, in length. And that the measurement is from the tip of the blade to the end of the lowest handle down there. If you were wondering, and again, those are £14.99. Don't see enough left-handed scissors, do we? Mind you, scissor scissors, or left or right-handed anyway, I suppose. These are right-handed. These are the functional form scissors. And again, you've, you've got the comfort and a really good long blade on those. 
for your £14.99. Again, that is such a good price for shears. These are 24 centimetres, so slightly longer than the left-handed ones, but really comfortable, and that's so important. Um, particularly if you're cutting through very large pieces of fabric, if you're dressmaking or if you're curtain making or if you're using scissors to square up a quilt, um, it's nice to have the, the long blade because you're, you're using less effort. Instead of making lots and lots of little snips, which could be inaccurate, you get a nice long snip all the way down to the point. And again, they're 14 pounds. 99p. I'm going to give you, a, <clears throat> excuse me, a reminder of our fabric bundles. Oh, do a bit of sewing. So this is the ebony, all half meter lengths, mode of quality, and designed by May Morris. So half a meter of the stripe. Oh, I just love that. It looks so mystical, doesn't it? Half a metre again. And your assorted flowers, which is that way around. And the large flowers. There's honeysuckle. Oh, oh, now with the honeysuckle, have we got, got a bit of info about the honeysuckle? Oh, now then. Oh, that was a wallpaper designed by May Morris. Hand painted. Oh, can you imagine? Hand painted. Oh, sorry, hand printed. Hand printed? Really? That would take a long time. In 1883. You can imagine that, can't you? And that Arcadia as well. That's, uh, that's wallpaper too. Imagine how the rooms would have looked. I bet they had really heavy um, velvet curtains with big tassels on them and tapestry furniture and lots of carvings, lots of oak. I would imagine. Well, you know, when you go into a, a stately home and um, or a museum and you see these kind of things. And the English wildflowers gathered at Newbury in Berkshire. Oh. Love, love to have the story, isn't it? We have berries. There are two berry fabrics with this collection. So, and the black and with the sage. And then finally there are the tulips. So that's the ebony collection at 58 pounds, 99 pence for all of those. You got four meters in total, so seven pieces, eight pieces. Okay, and should we take a look at the crimson? Because this is the one with that, um, the owl um, hanging, which was the, Silk embroidery. So that's the large stripe. We also have berries and the stripe, honeysuckle, tulips, large flowers, assorted flowers, and Arcadia for fifty-eight pounds ninety-nine pence. For four meters again. What are you going to make? You're going for the bundle, you're going to make a quilt, aren't you? I can't wait to see you work on these. Have you got something in mind? Have you got a design already? Are you making your own? Or do you just think, no, I just want it? Don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I just want it. We get like that with fabric, don't we? So again, £58.99 for all of those. We've got. A few more books for you. This is the new Cross Stitches Bible by uh, Jane Greenoff. So this is a completely revised edition of the original, which was a bestseller. So all brought to you up to date. And this is your reference guide. This is your go to. So the definitive manual, she's calling it. So let's take a look. Oops the getting started, the tools that you're going to need, the threads that you're going to use, and then lots of different stitch techniques, how to identify your threads. And then, oh, I love that, French knot. French knots for flowers are so perfect, aren't they? And I love the smaller designs on these as well. Achievable things for a beginner, things that you're not going to get too bored with. And then larger projects that you can just while away the time, but being productive at the same time. 
So blending elements, different types of threads, different types of materials that you can work on. Um, and embellishments you can use as well. Oh, a bit of black work in there too. But some lovely designs. And great explanations of all of these as well. Now this is £14.99. I had a feeling. No, I thought it was signed. It must have sold out of the signed ones. Apologies. Um, again, at £14.99 is your price there. Well, they should be signed, shouldn't they? Maybe this one just slipped through her fingers. She's, <laughs> she's probably signed page 48 or something. But you will have a signed copy, which makes, makes your book even more special when it has the author's signature, doesn't it? Those are all your patterns and templates in the back as well. So everything explained. You may look at those as a first time and think, oh, that looks really complicated. But when you know the stitches that you're going to use and you've got all of the different uh, techniques explained so simply by Jane, then it's a little bit less daunting. Was that ribbon embroidery? Oh, I love a bit of ribbon. But a complete reference for you for just £14.99. We've got Jane's Hard Anger book here as well. So this one is... Um, ring bound which is nice and there's the history of hard anger and then takes you through to and oh and how jane got involved as well materials that you're going to need and there's your techniques the bit that i always find a little bit scary is the is the cutting bit Cutting and pulling the threads, but what a lovely effect when you when you have. It's really pretty, isn't it? With the colour behind there, just makes it makes the design really stand out. And these are your projects. So there's a little scissor keeper. So again, small achievable projects for a beginner. Strawberry scissor keeper. And then you've got your notebook as well, or your needle book, sorry. Um, more storage. You can make any bookmarks. And of course, once you've learned these techniques, I, do, I like a bit scorny, um, you can make up your own. You could make up your own little projects with those as well. And those are all of your patterns again in the back. So that's £9.99. Another little book that you're going to find is signed. And if you need little snips to snip with, these are Fiskars snips. Um, if you're snipping into um, fibres for hard anger and such like, very pointy, very sharp scissors right down to the end are very important. And I can show you how sharp these actually are. And a bit of fabric. So imagine you're only snipping a few threads. You can snip literally one at a time. So I guess tiny snip you see how much fabric I've got there so particularly with hard anger you can just snip one little bit at a time um, but again for embroidery um, or any kind of general um, sewing you're going to need a small pair of snips at some point and those £13.99 and again you've got Fiskars they have been making scissors for hundreds of years I think it was 16, 1649 or was it 1849? It was a long time ago. But experts in scissor making. Um, £13.99 for your snips. And again, if you'd like to order, have a look on our website, sewingstreet.com, or you can order on the phone lines, which is 0800 001 4433, and that is a free UK phone number as well, which is rather nice. So how many times a day are you washing your hands at the moment? I'm not being your mum. I'm just suggesting that your hands might be a little bit dry. Um, Karen has developed Seams hand cream specifically for the sewer because the big concern with sewing is 
that you're going to get grease on your fabric, which is the last thing that you want. So this is a, it's actually a surprising hand cream because it does sink into the skin as quickly as you said it would do. Um, and it smells wonderful. It smells like a spa. It smells like you're really spoiling yourself. Uh, so do as many of those as you like for £13.99. Uh, let me just show you. I'm not, you don't need very much. That, that is one thing I will say. Do not use a lot of this. It goes a long, long way. But it literally just disappears into the skin in almost an instant. So that's gone. There's a little bit of a shine there, but it's certainly not sticky. And I'm not going to leave any residue on my fabric. But it smells... I mean, one day when we have smelly telly, I'll be able to go have a smell. But it's... Oh, it's just wonderful. It's, it does smell like you're at a spa. And it does go a long way. Honestly, the first time you use it, you'll put the, the same amount of um, cream on your hands like you would do normally, and you'd be wiping it up your arms and your legs and your neighbour. No, no, don't wipe your neighbour, you're not allowed to. Keep forgetting. <laughs> so. And it comes nicely packaged. What a nice gift idea that would make as well, wouldn't it? So apart from, apart from the fact that it sinks into your skin and it smells wonderful, um, it does the job. It really makes your skin feel lovely afterwards. So it's smoothing. It's really good if you have um, dry skin, if you've got uh, any kind of rough skin um, or marks or calluses and things like that. It, it, it really does help. I use it on my feet as well. So again, £13.99 price. Not going to leave... Um, stickiness I tend to get I do a lot of hand sewing sometimes I forget a needle and I do get a hole in the end of my finger it's ever so painful because you you push the needle through with the same bit every time so when you've broken the skin it's all right very um but this is a, you can't make medical claims can we but try <laughs> just have a try um we also have your cuticle oil so the two go together really well these aren't open I feel as though I shouldn't really be playing with these Sure, we had open one somewhere. Because nobody else can use it after I've used it, so this is mine. Um, so, Silk Touch Oil, this one's called. And again, don't use very much. And in fact, with the dropper, I wouldn't even squeeze it. Tiny little amount like this. And just rub it into your cuticles and it makes them nice and soft. And of course, that is going to encourage nail growth. So you can see how much I didn't use there. There's very, very little. This will last you for, gosh, I think that's going to last you for years. Um, so softening the cuticles and um, sometimes you can get like <laughs> frayed bits around your nails, if that makes sense. I'm sure they're called something, but um, the sewing terminology is a fray and they can be quite painful as well. So that, that kind of really helps and it's soothing as well. And it smells like a spa again. And it's only £21.99. I want to write mine on those now. I do have mine in my handbag, actually. I wish it was the same with sewing machines. Oh, no, I'm sorry, nobody else can use that machine. It's not hygienic, so I may as well just take it home and keep it myself. Should we make a bag? I am going to use in the... Um, the Sage, the Golden Sage collection, I think we'll have the, should we do the Honeysuckle? Let's do Honeysuckle and Tulips. I think those two would go together quite well, wouldn't they? And it's just a really simple little drawstring bag. So let's move those out of the way. All you need is two squares of fabric. So that could be two fat quarters, as, as big or as small as you like, basically. So let's cut these out together and you will need a cord to go around there. Need some ribbon. I might just use some yarn. Um. I've got yarn, that'll be fine. It's the right colour. So let's line these up and we're simply going to cut two squares. I don't think we do ribbon, do we? Maybe we should start doing ribbon. Oh, we do do ribbon, thank you. Seamless. So let's cut. So I'm just checking to see if we've got any messages from you. So it doesn't really matter the size as long as this is square. So let's do that. So I'll square this off first. I think we need a new blade in that one. And 
I'll square it off, then I'll measure it to see how much we actually have here. And that isn't quite square here. Right, so my square is 20 inches, so I need to go 20 inches up this way, oh, which is over the end of it, so large cutting mats are on the website by the way, or up here, oh that's a bit of a way to reach. And there we go. Right, and we are going to sew both pieces right sides together all the way around the edge. Note to self, bring spare blades for the alpha. So right sides together. And we're going to go all the way around and leave a gap for turning in one side with my little 550 which is a very nice light compact machine which is feature packed with 50 stitches and it doesn't need a foot pedal so literally into the corner stop needle down around about a quarter of an inch seam allowance it's just got caught under there So it's quite a quick bag. It does take up a bit of fabric, to be honest, but you can maybe use um, a plain one on the inside. Smith that out so you can see what I'm doing. Into the corner and stop. Needle down, turn around. The choreography. Off we go. Easier not to pin, I find, um, with things like this. It's just as easy to hold the two pieces together. You could put um, a little bit of a plique on one of the corners before you start. And down, back around. Off we go. But it makes a nice little gift bag. It's quite substantial when it's finished because I'm going to fold the fabric a few times. So you don't need any fusible fleece or anything or any wadding inside it. So you've got quite a fair amount of fabric there, so it makes it nice and stable. Um, but it's one of those little bags. If, you're, if you've got birthdays coming up or you're thinking ahead to Christmas time, if you're sewing well in advance, um, it's one of those little bags that is more than just a gift bag. It's a gift of a bag, so you can use it again and again. Maybe storage to keep your, I don't know, cotton wool buds at the back of the bathroom door. All right, that'll do. Or on your dressing table. Or if you've got a couple of um, fat quarters of fabric that you just didn't know what to do with. Let's take my reformer scissors and snip across the corners. And then we'll turn it the right side out. Come here. There we go. And I'm going to use actually my iron finger to push out the corners. Don't use your scissors to do this. I think we've all done it and we've all been really careful and then there's that one time where the blade goes through and oh, got to go back and sew it all over again now. So use the right tools for the job. So I'd have the iron on and press this normally, but I shan't this time because it's just going to take too long. Push that out there. Come on, last one. And then I'm going to sew all around the edge and that gives a nice neat finish, but it also stops, um, it also closes up the, the gap that I left for turning. So we can lengthen the stitch now because this is a decorative stitch. So we'll go up to three and a half on this one. 
and just make sure that the seam is right on the edge. Coming up to the gap there, so I'm just going to pull that gently so that the sides flip inside. And so. A loose thread there, I'll cut that off afterwards. I don't like these little threads sticking out. Um, and literally all, all around the edge. You might find that a bit easier after it's been pressed. Maybe use some of your best press on there. If you've got a floppy fabric that you need to get a crease into. Into the corner. Needle down, turn around. So it's got a nice crisp edge there already, which is what we want. So let's pull out that seam. Come on, let you come. So the seam's right on the edge. So you could use a plain lining fabric if you didn't want to waste your posh fabric on both sides. And a non-directional fabric tends to work best because one side of this will actually be upside down. Although there's going to be a lot of pleats, so you're not going to notice that. Two more sides, they're almost there. Just twisting that so that the seam sits on the edge. Nice beginner project as well if you are starting to sew or teaching somebody how to sew. And it's nice, I think, to have a project that is useful, that you can gift, that you can use. You can use it to keep your sewing notions in and bits and bobs. Maybe a button bag. Somewhere to keep your hooks and eyes and your closures and fastenings. We'll have a few of them. Three little drawstring bags on an, a, a vintage coat hook would be a really nice feature. But something that's purposeful as well. There you go. Almost there. Again, just straightening out that seam so it sits right on the edge. It's a quick little machine, this one as well. Have a look on the... Um, on the website for more details, um, this is the most affordable machine that we bring you. But it's a really nice, reliable little thing as well. Right, well, it's an L in there. What do you expect? Now then, we are going to fold this over to the centre with those two pieces overlapping slightly. So I'm going to make sure this is straight by using my cutting mat and I need these to be square. So just to make sure they are, I'm going to fold that over. That's not quite there, look. That is. I've just got a thread to snip off there. I think that is sitting very well. Maybe you shan't overlap it quite so much. Make a bigger bag then. So just rearrange again. Using my mat to make sure it's square. Although it's only a drawstring bag, it's not the end of the world if it's not perfect. Threads everywhere. And then I'm going to sew straight down the centre. So I know where the centre is because it's on the point. And I'm going to use a white chalk pencil. Make sure it's square. So, I don't know if you can see that, but the white is standing out very well against there. And then we'll have a couple of pins just to hold that together while I sew. And straight down the line. Through the whole lot. So we'll have a shorter stitch length again. So start, reverse, and off we go. Straight over the fold in the centre. Down to the other side and reverse. And stop. 
I, I get so used to using a foot pedal when I've got to start, stop. My foot is actually doing this at the side, wondering why it's still going when, I, when I've stopped it. Right, so we have this. Take my pins out. And my bag is actually going to be that way, like so, with the flat folded down like that. So we need to sew the sides together. Two ways you can do that. Um, if I sew from the top here, which I'm going to, you'll see the seams on the outside. You can sew it from the inside and the seams go on the inside. But because you haven't got a raw edge, I don't mind the seams being on the outside. So quite close to the edge again, I'm sewing here. Looking for my foot pedal, haven't got it plugged in. So a little back stitch at the top just to strengthen that. And sew really close to the edge, making sure I've got all the layers of fabric included. I'm going to snip that off and the same on the opposite side. So start, reverse and away we go. And that's that. So again, let's snip off my loose threads. And then these bits are going to be folded down. And I'm going to sew a channel all the way around the top. And that's where the ribbon's going to be threaded. So let's take the free arm or the accessory compartment off the machine. I love a full accessory compartment. And we'll sew, this might be easier to pin it first or measure and mark it if you prefer. But I need, to, I need the channel to be slightly wider than my ribbon, and my ribbon is half an inch wide. So a tad over half an inch. Just keep that folded nicely there. So I'm just coming up to the lumpy seam, so I kind of try and squish that open, but I'm not too fussed. back to the beginning. Oh, all these threads. So, over the lumpy seam. And we're done there. So let's just snip these off. Tell you what would be nice. This is a really simple project. I was saying about maybe putting some applique on the front, maybe on the flap. But how about doing an embroidery design on there? just on this bit here. Maybe, maybe you could design your own embroidery design if you had a sewing machine that had the software to enable you to do that. And I think that would be a really nice idea. Um, do you know, I think we should do that at 10 o'clock this morning. Like I have any say in the matter. Do you know, I, I think as well in this um, 10 o'clock show uh, where we've just decided we're going to launch a brand new sewing machine, um, I think we should have the experts in to make a video myself. I know we haven't got very much time to, to make a video, but I think it would be very nice to get Jane from Elna just to pop over and, uh, and make a video for us for the next show. Because she doesn't live very far away, so she could quite easily pop in and just do a quick video, couldn't she? So I'm threading one piece of ribbon around the top in one direction and then we'll do a second piece in the opposite direction and then we'll be done. So that goes there and this one, we tie those off. So just pull that through like so. I'll have a little knot there. Nice to have a new sewing machine launch. Um, and then this one goes in from the opposite side. I, I always think it's really interesting with sewing machines, even if you're not in the market for a new one, just to see what they can do these days. If you're brought up um, in my kind of era, Edwardian, um, then sewing machines, well, certainly the sewing machine that I had was really basic. Which is fine, you know, when most of us learn to sew on a basic sewing machine. But when you see the kind of things that they can do nowadays, it's just amazing. Opportunities that you have. 
So, yep, even if you're not interested in an embroidery machine, it's an embroidery and sewing machine, so just stick around if you can and have a look at the uh, amazing things that you'll be able to do. Right, make that even, tie that in a knot. You could make this a lot neater at the end and maybe add a little bead or something like that. I'm just doing knots for now. And then there's our little bag, and when we pull the two drawstrings, that gathers up. But also we have pockets on the inside as well. Because of the way that it's been folded, it just means that you end up with four little, little pockets in the corner. So that's one idea, the kind of thing I would use red normally for the ribbon, just to make it coordinated. One little idea for you, just using two squares of fabric. So I hope, hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, let me just move these out of the way and I'll give you, out of the way later, and I'll give you a reminder of the fabric bundles. If you wanted these individually, by the way, have a look on the website on sewingstreet.com. Uh, in fact, do you want to do that? Do you want to look at some of them individually? Which ones would you like to see? We've got the black, we've got the ebony. Oh, now you've seen that one already because the, these are the details of the, the two fabrics there, the honeysuckle and the, uh, and the tulips from the sage range. They're £7.49 for your half metre and you can order more. So if you wanted to make a pair of curtains or a larger bag, you could use a metre square. You could make a really big one of these. You know, it's only about um, not needing any fusible fleece or anything either because the, the four layers of fabric, in fact more than four, make it really substantial. Uh, so that's the honeysuckle. We do have the honeysuckle on ebony as well. So same print, but a very different look. As you can see. So we've got gold and honeysuckle this time with the deep ebony background. £7.49 for half a metre, 112 centimetres wide. We also have the honeysuckle in crimson, oh, which is this one. Actually, they go really nicely together, the crimson and the sage. That would make a nice bag, wouldn't it? Have one of each. Um, £7.49, again, your price there. Non-directional. The assorted flowers on ebony. Is that one? So we've got the yellows and the reds, we've got blues. And again, at £7.49. And we have assorted flowers on indigo, which is that one. I feel like Challenge Annika. Um, again, at £7.49. Oh, we've got assorted flowers on crimson. These are all the ones that are available. In fact, there's probably more if you have a look on the website. Buy the half metre. That's your crimson version. So take a look on sewingstreet.com for more details there. There you go. Also want to give you a reminder before we finish this hour of the scissor rack. And there we go. You can fit up to 18 pairs of scissors on this uh, Lazy Susan style scissor rack. And of course, more than just scissors on there as well. But it keeps you, it's nice and handy and it keeps you organized too. You know where they all are. They're all kept safe. Stick them all up on a high shelf to keep them away from little fingers. But it's really nicely made as well. Um, in the previous hour, I showed you the slash cutter, which is this one, which has two ends to it. So one for straight lines and one for curved lines. Looks a little bit like a rotary cutter, but it's not. And the blade doesn't spin around, but it does click around so that you can use different areas of the blade. You can feel it when it starts to blunt and you've got eight clicks. So just click it around, click it around so that you can use fresh pieces. The long uh, section here goes on top of your backing fabric and then you cut through your top layers. And the shorter option here is to go around curves. So straight lines and curves for £14.99. Um, and the fabric bundle that we put together with it will enable you to make a cushion cover of this kind of size. That one hasn't been brushed up yet. So what I used to make this was three peony fabrics. So three of those, which is so big. 
three of those and a backing fabric. The backing fabric we're giving you is in cream and um, there's one and a half metres in total. So there's plenty enough with left over to make a cushion cover. Can't wait to see what you've been making with these. And um, I think you can stretch that an awful lot further. So that's using all three pieces. Needs a good old brush up so you can see the different layers through there, like I did with this one. But I'm thinking that, um, so I'm in there about all this, this fluffiness. It's so much fun to do. Um, that you could easily use your own backing fabrics on there. Maybe even a pink behind there would look nice instead of all white and um, make three. You can make three cushion covers or two cushion covers and a wall hanging for £22.99. That's so much fun to do. I really enjoyed making this. But it's nice to have the right tool for the job to do it because I've done this before with scissors and it takes ages and you end up snipping through the backing fabric. Oh, let's start again. Um, so right tools for the job always works, doesn't it? OK, now coming up in the next hour, uh, we have a brand new sewing slash embroidery machine for you, which I'm really excited to bring you. So we'll see you again in uh, two or three minutes. Go and put the kettle on. See you in a sec. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it and when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is Positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you, because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street, where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello there, my name is Debbie Shaw. Welcome back to Sewing Street. Now in this hour, we have something very exciting and something very special for you. It's always exciting when we can bring you a brand new sewing machine, but even more so when it's a sewing and embroidery machine um, by such a well-known reputable brand such as Elna, um, and with amazing discount and exclusivity as well.
So this machine is going to be £1,999, but for a limited time while we have the stocks. When we sell out of the stock that's been allocated at this £500 saving, um, we will hopefully we'll still be able to bring you the machine, but it will be at a higher price. You'll be paying almost £2,500 for it. So it's a machine that is absolutely feature packed. It does come with software as well in the form of a CD-ROM, so you can design your own. You can import different um, designs as well, so you're not limited to whatever it is that your um, machine is going to come with. So it's brought to you by Genomi, so I said Elna, same thing, same company. And it, this is the Atelier 9 sewing and embroidery machine. Um, now, we, we did have Jane in the studio a few days ago, and um, she is uh, going to give you a demonstration and a good old talk around the machine, explain all about the sewing side of it and all about the embroidery side of it. If you've already seen or heard of the machine and you think, you know, I, I just... I just want the value, I just want it now, then you can take a look on our website on sewingstreet.com and it's on the third page. So take note of the details here and of your item number and of your price. Look it up on sewingstreet.com. If you have any questions or anything, then you can still come through on the Facebook page or on the phone lines if you wish. And uh, we will, if we can't answer questions straight away, we will find the answers and we'll get back to you as quickly as we possibly can. But let's get in there straight away. Let me introduce you to Jane, who will in turn introduce you to this amazing machine. Good morning everybody, it's lovely to be here with you. Um, can I just say before we start, I'm very lucky, I live very, very close to the studio, it's literally a few miles away, and there's also just myself and Joe in recording at the moment, so we're practising social distancing and everything's been sanitised. So I say before we start, we just cover those few points, just to make sure that you all know we're all keeping very safe. Um, this morning I am here, I mean most of you already know me, um, what, what I've built machines before for you. My name is Jane Brogan, I work for Elm and Genomi in the UK and I look after the south of England. Um, so I'm just coming in today and we are pre-recording this obviously for you. So, and I'm coming in today with a fabulous Atelier 9. Bring it on to air for you so we can have a look at this. It's an embroidery and sewing machine. It's a fabulous machine. It's got so many different features. So we're just going to go and start going through it and just to look at all the basics on the sewing side first. And then we'll switch over and we'll look at the embroidery as well for it. So I just want to start going through all the things we get in the box. It has taken us about 10 minutes to unpack it because there's so much in there. So obviously we've got the machine. We also have the manual. Um, we've got two DVDs, one is an instructional DVD and the other one is a little DVD CD called AccuTools which is some basic editing that you can put onto your Microsoft laptop for it. The other thing well, I remember what I must say as well is you've got a two years warranty with this. It's a standard two year warranty in the UK for all the Eln and Genomi machines across the board. Occasionally we can get an extended one for you but at the moment we're on two year warranties. You can extend it yourself directly with us at Genomi if you need to quite a small amount of money. So, right, where should we start? I think we should need to look at what we get in the box with the machine, would be fabulous. Obviously you've got your machine, manuals, CDs, we've got the cloth guide here, which I will show you all later. Fabulous big foot pedal. It also comes in, we've also hidden around the corner, power lead and a direct link for the laptop if you want to take designs over from your laptop onto the machine. The machine is also Wi-Fi, so that makes it very easy. You just pop it into your Wi-Fi the same as you would a phone, any other gadget, and you can Wi-Fi designs backwards and forwards to the machine with it. I'll pop those to one side. Fabulous foot. What I will say with the foot pedal is we get calls at the office going, you haven't put me a lead in with the foot pedal. It's actually in the back here. It's all wound in. It's all nice and neat in there so that you can Keep it nice and tidy when you're not using it. You can, as with most of these machines, you still do have the facility to sew with just the stop start button if you don't want to use the foot pedal. That's personal choice. We've also got a knee lift with the machine, which comes with it. It comes with the three embroidery hoops. They all come in the machine. So they've all got the little um, acrylic templates here for hooping up so you can um, your designs in the right place when you're hooping so all the hoops come with it these are the ones available with this machine and we've popped all these in upside down the right way right so they've all got the little templates with them so I'm going to pop those to one side for now Oops. pop these away you've also comes with a nice semi-rigid canvas cover for the machine just to pop over it just it's more like a dust cover because you don't need it's got a lovely big pocket in the back and it well goes up here 
So we've got that and we've also got then another pocket in the front and plenty of space here for when you want to pop the machine away in it, just to cover it over. I'm going to pop that out of the way. And we also mustn't forget, we have the embroidery unit, which comes and you've got a lovely little storage case for it in the box. So the embroidery unit sits nicely in here. So you can see it's all tucked away in there. I tend to, when I am using the sewing machines at home with the embroidery units, I very seldom take my embroidery unit off the back unless I'm going to move the machine. Obviously, don't carry it with a unit attached to it because it gives you some extra bed space, as we'll see later when we start using it. Pop that away. Pop this out of the way. There we go. Pop that down there. Feet and accessories, of which there are many. So we've also got the little embroidery clips. If you look at a couple of these frames, have got... Let me pop to this one first. They have got metal on the side here, if you can see. These little clips are for when you're hooping. It just really holds the fabric well for you. So that's what those are for. A lot of people ask me that when I see them out and about on my travel. used to see them out and about on my travels. You've also got the couching foot for the embroidery side. I will look at that when we go onto embroidery. Got quite a lot of stuff sitting here. I'm going to just tidy this up a little bit now. Pop these all out of the way. So we've got a little bit of space to work with. Oops. There we go. All back. Pop those there. You also get a couple of quick reference charts to start with. So they are really good. It's just a quick easy way they're wiped clean as well so if you put your coffee on them they won't stain and it just works through what all the different keys are all the basic things so instead of having to look in the manual you can just pop one of these and think right one for embroidery and one for sewing I do feet and accessories which there are many the great thing with these machines is you really don't need to buy anything else to start you off so I'm going to empty these out there we go so you've got some lovely embroidery scissors. I'm going to pop these all out on the table here. You've got the little uh, a gadget here for, if you're doing shanks on buttons, anything like that, that's great. Or also for going on to heavy seams. So we have spool caps. So you've got one, two small ones, larger one. There is a larger one, if I pop this up, there's a larger one on the machine already. And you've also got the two little ones here. Um, they are for a lot of the threads now come on a great big like a long card center which come right to the end of the uh, spool pin so this one I'll show you on this spare spool pin it just pops on that way and it's really good for holding it steady Pop that so. you come with four bobbins there's one in the machine. They are standard Janome bobbins. One size fits all on the bobbins for Janome and Elna, so you don't have to worry. You've already got a Janome or an Elna, you can interchange your bobbins for it. We have a screwdriver, a little brush for cleaning, a quick on pick, which is an essential piece of kit for most of us. We've got a little piece of um, screen cleaner here as well, that's for doing the screen. The stylus, which is for using the touch screen on there. And we come now with the different feet. I'm going to pop these to one side. So the standard presser foot will be on the machine when it arrives. So you've got that to start with. So that's great. You have also got satin stitch feet. You've got the, the F foot and the F2 foot. They are both the difference being the F2 foot is an open toe and the F foot isn't. The great thing with these feet is the machine will tell you which feet to use. These have got a little indent underneath so that you can actually, it's for doing the heavier decorative stitches or alphabets, so you're not putting a lot of pressure on it and you get a really good quality finish. We've also got our quarter inch foot. We have got our over edge foot. We have got our blind hem foot. A zip foot. You've got the little rolled edge hem, the little tiny hem, which is great for doing fine fabrics. You've also comes with a standard free motion foot. You've also got two extra little feet in there. These are for free motion and when we look at the machine I'll show you how they work. Fabulous foot for sewing on buttons which again is once you get used to it you wonder how you ever lived without that foot. We've also got the embroidery foot 
which is purely for the embroidery side. And then we come to, we've got another little Freemason foot here that pops on there. You also get the yellow dot bobbin case here. If you can see, it's got a yellow dot and there's also a yellow mark on the side so that you can see. If you're not using Janome embroidery thread, then just pop your bobbin case, swatch it out, pop the other one out and pop this one in. The tension setting slightly different on it. Spare needles, so you've got your blue tips in there, a red tip and a purple tip and also a twin needle in there. Quilt guide. And now we come to the walking feet, of which there are two. So there's a single one and I've got two plates here. When the machine arrives, you're probably thinking, where's the buttonhole foot? Where's the walking foot? They are actually tucked away in here. So pop that out, pop the little storage out and we have one buttonhole foot and also it's the AccuFeed foot, the AccuFlex foot, so that's a great one. That replaces the standard white walking foot that most of us are used to. The brilliant thing with this is that we can actually take the plates off the bottom. That's your standard one. I've got a quarter of an inch one here and you can just quite easily re-clip that on. So they're very easy to change and also it's much cheaper to buy the plate than have to buy a whole new great big walking foot. So that's all that is. So that comes with a quarter inch, the open toe and the closed toe that one back on before I lose it and then we also got on here a single narrow foot this is brilliant I use this a lot if I'm doing anything heavy say if I was making some bags or doing anything like that it's brilliant because you've still got the walking foot here but it's quite narrow so you can get in much tighter corners and that comes with a standard foot on it and also the little zip attachment which is absolutely brilliant again for heavy things you can get into all the tight corners Right, so I'm just going to pop these back in here so I don't lose them. I'll pop this back in. You also get with this machine a straight stitch plate. Again, I'm going to get this. We'll look at this in detail, more detail later. Your normal stitch plate has got a slot in it to accommodate the width of the stitch, the zigzag with the needle swing. This one, the machine knows when we've popped this on and it will only let you do stitches that work with this needle plate. But again, it's something we can look at in a minute so I think we're going through everything now it's everything that comes with the machine when you start so I think now we need to set it up and do some sewing so the first thing we need to do is wind the bobbin so I'm going to lift the press foot up manually there's a little button here that pops the case off the top I'm going to take the bobbin out that's in it when the machine arrives if we look on the top of the machine you can see here you've got a solid line which is how we thread the machine and there's also a dotted line across this is the path that we take the thread to wind the bobbin so I'm going to pop this underneath here it's underneath there across round the back take it down I tend to wind it round the bobbin some people with some little holes in the bobbin so you can po pop it through there and hold it whichever way works best for you Pop it across so it engages it and then we'll press the start stop or if you've got the foot pedal in you can um, you can use a foot pedal to do it and again I'm going to pop the speed control right up for me and so we're going to wind a bobbin before we start sewing. And then when we've got enough on there, it will automatically, when it's full, pop across, but we don't really need a full bobbin at the moment, so I'm going to stop the machine. Push the bobbin back across, lift it off, cut the thread on the little cutter here, and then we're ready to thread the machine. So threading the machine with the bobbin, we're going to hold it so it's either P for perfect, or I'm left-handed, so I just go top left. It actually drops in, and it goes underneath. You've got two little guys here. You've got one here, and this one here. You take it round and then follow the easy thread on the side back towards me and it will cut it off. If you ever forget, you do have a little diagram. I don't know if we can ever see, see it. A little diagram on the case that covers it to show you how to thread it. And pop that back on. So that's that piece done. So now to thread the machine, I'm going to take this out again. Again, make sure you press the foot up when you thread so you open the tension discs. And again, it's almost thread by numbers, so it's a solid line now. And we go in one, round that way, two, down to three, back up to four on the top, down, five through there, through the little thread guys on here. And then we're going to pop it through there. And you'll feel it when you pop it in here to use a needle threader, you'll feel it just clip in. And then I'm going to pop the foot down. 
and then the needle threader is coming down and that's it we have one needle threaded press the foot up now and take that round and then we're now ready to sew when you start with the machine obviously it comes with a standard presser foot all sewing machines default to a straight stitch here and it's the information on the screen it's giving me it's telling me it's on the straight stitch and it's telling me what presser foot to use as well we've also on these machines now we've got the automatic foot lift which is really handy when you're sewing this one here this looks like a little foot with it if i press that it changes color so now i know that that's active anything on the machine that goes up little golden yellow color you know that you've activated it in some way so i'm going to slow the speed down and i'm going to press the start stop and off we go now i can speed it up if i want to and slow it right down the same with the foot pedal so when i'm ready to pivot i can stop so it's going to stop lift the foot so i can pivot it's great if you've got something heavy under there, like a quilt or a coat or a pair of curtains. And we have a lock stitch, so that will stop and tie off. And then the auto cut. So that is quite, quite straightforward. We can, when we have a look at settings later, I will go into that and show you how you can set it so that every time you lock stitch, it will automatically cut for you and lift the foot. That's, um, that's another thing. So again, I think if we have a little look around the screen now. So on here, so we've anything that's active, so the feed's up, foot's active. We want to select another stitch, today, we want a zigzag. We just touch the screen. And again, the lightning stretch stitch, touch the screen. So that takes you through, it's really easy. And again, if we look on the bottom here, you've got the stitch width and the stitch length. You can alter it. And again, the lovely thing is, you can see it's actually altering on the screen at the same time. So we've also, there's a little arrow here. This screen's always visible in, in any of the stitches. So if I pop this so it gives us more information about that stitch. So it's automatic tension, so you don't need to bother about tensions. Very seldom you have to, and it's usually if I'm using some really thick threads or a really difficult fabric, I may look at it. The top foot pressure is automatic, and again, you do have the option to change it if you need to. When we've finished with that stitch and we want to go back, we just press default and it will take me back to the original settings on the machine. I'll pop that one away. So this one is utility stitches in here. They're all inside the lid, so you've got them here as well. So it's really easy to see. So you, it's just an, another guide for you, really. So then we've got buttonholes, we've got a plique, heirloom, lovely range of quilt stitches, some satin stitches bridge stitches you've got some decorative ones as well long stitches and pictograph and then your fonts are here here also shows me when i change a needle plate to the straight stitch needle plate these are the stitches that you can use it for we'll do that in a little while um, and it just grays everything else out so you can't accidentally break anything you've also got the little icon here which is for mirror imaging and then underneath we've got a little it's a lilac and purple color and some of the stitches are that colour as well. This is a tapering function, so we can taper the ends of those stitches to get decorative finishes, and it's great for doing borders and things like that. So now, so in utility, if we want to go into decorative, we can touch that. And that brings up all the different categories that are in, built into the lid here. So if I want to do some decorative stitches, I just select decorative, and it brings me up that screen. Again, it's telling me I've got eight pages of decorative stitches and we've also, if you can see, we've got some more little icons now. This one is for building stitch sequences. We've got mirror image, so we've got a mirror image and we also do horizontal and vertical, twin needle and tapering. So if we want to go into a stitch that we can, let me have a little look and try and find one for us that will, so we can just scroll through so one of these. So something like this, if I choose stitch 27, these are both active now. So I can flip that stitch, mirror image it, and I can also do it vertically and horizontally. Um, and that's lovely because again, you can tell that you've altered that basic stitch because you've changed color on these. And then to go back, we can just take it round. It's really easy to do. And again, it's like putting a stitch sequence together. Some of the machines, you type the number and then press memory. This one, we actually touch the little hearts here and it brings us up now. So if I can just touch these stitches, it'll bring me up that one and these ones. So you can build your own stitch sequence up. If you want to have a preview so you can see what it actually looks like, 
touch it on the bottom and it will bring you up here into a preview screen so you can actually look at the stitches that you've put together. These work really well because they all run off the bottom. It's worth having a little play with them as well because you because having the facility to mirror image them or put them, flip them horizontally and vertically, you can get some really nice patterns built up and it just you've got an infinite amount of patterns on the machine then. So we can then, if that's a pattern we're going to use all the time, we can save it onto the machine just by clicking the little folder. So we can use it, save it onto the machine or onto a USB stick. We've got the option to use it on both. And then we will just name it um, and then OK and save it. But we can go through that later on. So again, when, if we finish, we do that. If it's something we want to sew out, um, we can use the pattern. If we want to sew that three stitch repeat over and over again, we can just leave it as it is. If we actually want to just do it once, we can press the lock stitch. So it's only going to stitch that once for me. I think we pop it on. I'm going to change the foot as well because it's telling me here to put the F foot on. Really easy to change, just a quick press, the foot drops off. And I will then find my satin stitch foot somewhere. Here we go. Which is on here. Easy change. Again, when you're changing the feet or the bobbins or anything like that on the machine, make sure that you use the little key here. What that does is it locks the machine out so that nothing will work. You're not going to accidentally start the machine sewing. The only thing that will work is the foot lift. Everything else is locked out. And it's a great feature as well if you've got small children or pets and you've got to go away and leave the machine, just pop the lock stitch on so you know it's safe. The foot will just clip on, like so. There we go. So and then I can unlock the machine and that's it. And again, thread at the back. And again, you don't need to put the presser foot down or put the needle in. It will automatically do it for you. Even if you've got the foot pedal in, it will automatically, as soon as you put, pop your foot on the foot pedal, it will automatically put the presser foot down and it will sew the stitches for you. And it's what it's doing, you know where you are on the machine because you've got, it's coming up blue as it's changing stitches. And then because we've got the lock stitch, it's just going to sew that sequence once before it stops. Now I'm going to press the cut and that's it. So we've got our little stitch sequence there. These as well, you've got a nine millimeter stitch width on this and it does make a massive difference, which I will show you. You can really see the difference in the stitches when you look at the alphabets. So to get now, I'm going to lose that one. Just pop on that icon again and it will take you back. It always defaults back to the first stitch on the page there. Alphabets. I'm going to touch that. So you've got a range on here. You've got the block script Broadway and you've got a block 9mm. The standard block one is upper and lower case and numbers. 9mm block is just upper case. So we'll just have a little look at these. So the block, pop it into there and you just literally type the letters in. We're just going to put, oh, I can't even spell. So if you can see here, I was trying to do too many things at once. I made a spelling mistake, so it's very easy if we do that to just go back to there, pop it into the bin and put the eye in and that's it, done. So we don't need to put a lock stitch on the end of this because it will automatically finish when the words embroidered sewn out. You've also got spaces here, so if you want to put a little space in, if you're putting a sentence in or doing quilt labels or children's like um, clothing labels, anything like that. So you've got that facility. So we're just going to pop that down and again start sewing. And again, when I'm doing any like really decorative stitches or an alphabet, I keep this machine about on a mid speed. I see so many people who have it on full speed racing away. The machine's doing a lot of work and we want a really good stitch all the time. So it's just, just slow it down a little bit. I always say, when I used to teach, I say people takes a lot longer to unpick it than it does to sew it. So just bear that one in mind when you're racing away in your sewing machine. So again, that's finished for me. So we've got that's embroidered out sewing for me. That's a standard seven millimeter width, which is available on most machines. So now if we want to go onto the nine mil, so I'm going to go back into alphabets. 
nine mil. There we go. And I'm going to tap exactly the same in again. Hopefully I won't spell it wrong this time. There we go. And we're going to stitch again. And it's surprising, I know when I first saw these 9mm machines a few years ago now, that the difference that 2mm on the stitch width actually makes. And again, it's coming through so you can see the stitch it's sewing now, it highlights it into blue so you know exactly where you are in the sequence. Oh. And that is the difference between the 7 and the 9 mil. It's quite a, it, it's amazing the difference it does actually make the stitch size, so that's great. You don't always want the bigger stitch, quite often if you want the smaller, if you're doing like name tags for people's clothes and things like that, the smaller one's ideal, but again, you've got the option of the bigger one. What I'm going to have a look at now is on the machine as well. So we've had a look at the alphabets and the decoratives. I'm going to look at this one in a minute, so I'm going to pop it back onto here, and I'm going to look down the side. So this is the home one, so that will always take us home. That's to change the machine over to the embroidery mode. That's for your file, that's for your set. That's the little question mark here is quite handy. It won't bring me one in unless I do this. And it's got, it's like a little inbuilt, sort of almost a mini manual. So it's for if you want to winding the bobbin, threading the machine, your embroidery settings, um, buttonhole settings. And it's got two pages again, so we can scroll across on the bottom. And it brings you, it's really quite handy if you suddenly forget something, you know, oh, the manual's in the box. Pop onto here and it will show you how to do all the basic functions on the machine. What I want to look at at the moment is setting here, the set, the little spanner. So we've got your common settings, which applies to both embroidery and sewing. Then we've got the sewing side and the embroidery side. The little one here is for where you actually pop it into your Wi-Fi. So you just connect it the same as you would anything else. And this is... You can change the languages on it as well, but I'm just going to look at the common settings. So as we're coming across, you've got your screen contrast. So you can make it brighter if you want. You've got the volume for the bleep, so you can turn it up or down. You can go inches or millimetres, I quilt, so I always tend to be in inches. You can take it across. Touch screen calibration. If you ever feel that it's not quite, when you touch it, it's not quite right, you can calibrate it and it just gives you little points to touch around the screen. And then it's another, the next one is then to format your memory stick. So again, I would tend to use this more on the embroidery side. Format, I always have a low gig memory stick that I keep purely for my embroidery machines. Um, you pop it in, it will format it. So we'll pop it in, it's asking me to put it in. If there's anything else on it, it will wipe it. I just keep one that I use specifically for embroidery, so there's never anything else on it. And it will put on it then, it will put an EMB folder for the embroidery side and an ORD folder for the sewing side. You must make sure if you're going to put your designs, your embroidery designs, you're actually putting them into the folder so the machine can recognise it. And then we've done that, so we're going to lose that. And again, five pages, so we're going to cross again. Sewing lights, so I can actually switch my lights off if I want to. I'll go back on again. Upper thread sensor is on, so if the thread breaks, the machine will recognise it and stop for you. Standby timer. So basically, if I'm doing something else, if I'm cutting out or doing something else and I haven't stitched for 10 minutes, the machine will go into a standby mode. Um, screen saver, you can put your own screen savers on as well if you want to. You can change the background colour. You can pop it into pink or into yellow. It's really handy. Um, and your auto off timer. So I'm going to press OK and that all the changes you've made will be saved. If you just press the cross, then you will lose all the changes that you've just done. I'm going to pop back into settings now, onto ordinary sewing. So automatic tension is one of those things I never ever alter that. Once in a blue moon it has to be changed. And then we're going on to the remaining bobbin thread. This is relevant to both embroidery and sewing. It's set at 2 as a default. I always have mine on 0.5 because then you've got about a metre of thread left. Needle stop position is down. If you want it to always stop up then you can just alter it that way. Adjustable startup speed, so we've got the stop start button which is on the machine, or the foot control, so you can have it so it starts up always really, really slowly, then we'll speed up. You can have it so it starts up a little bit faster. 
or you can have it so it just starts up, um, on full speed straight away. Tend to leave it on the middle one. The nice thing is with the foot control, it, when you speed control on here, I've got it set about halfway now, so I could put my foot right down on the speed controller and it won't actually go any faster than I've got it set here. But equally, I can take some pressure off it and it will slow down. It's always quite handy to know. The cloth guide, we haven't got the embroidery unit on, so we can look at that later. Foot height for pivoting is really handy. It's set at standard 3mm. If you've got, say, a big pair of curtains under there, a quilt, a heavy coat, you can alter it so the foot will pivot. So when the foot lifts, when you stop automatically, it will lift higher. So it's much easier to, to, to move your work around underneath there. All that you're going to pop this back. You probably notice a lot of these have got like a little spot underneath almost. That's the default setting. So when they're on there, we know that they're back onto default. Press the foot pressure. Again, it's automatic. You may sometimes need to alter it. Variable zigzag. The variable zigzag is a setting. It works with the knee lift. So you can actually, I know people who do a lot of free machine embroidery who absolutely love this because it's great for doing like grass and leaves and things. So as you're pressing the knee lift, the, the um, zigzag will widen and narrow automatically with you. These are, this is a really nice screen to come to. So the thread cut after auto locks, I'm going to put that on. So now every time I press the lock stitch, it will automatically cut the thread for me. Favourite stitch adjustment is on. And so is resume mode. We'll look at those in a second. It's telling me now that's my fourth page of four. So I know I'm not going to look at the embroidery till we look at that side of the machine. So I'm going to go OK now. And we're back here. So I'm going to pop back onto decorative. Onto here. We'll take that one so we lose that. And I'm going to pop through and find a stitch. Actually, let me go back onto here. The one I use favourite stitch setting for most is actually a plique because you quite often you want a really precise stitch when you're doing a plique. So we just take the standard one here. So I'm going to pop the screen up and look at it here. So I'm going to make it narrower. I'm going to widen it that way. Take it that way. Actually, go the other way. Let's make it smaller. There we go. I'll put them like again. Because I've altered it now. So on the bottom here, you can see default, cloth guide and favourite stitch. So if I select favourite stitch, I can save it into my folder and again these have changed colour to that yellowy gold so I know that I've actually altered that stitch and that's set for my project now so every time I switch the machine on and I come back it will automatically default to that setting. We want to when we finish the project we can go back to favourite stitch, pop it into the bin, press default and it's automatically reset the machine to the default settings. It's a very handy one to have that to say because we all we've all done it we've all switched the machine off and walked away and thinking oh gosh what did I have the stitch on um so it's a really handy way especially if you're doing a big project so you haven't got to keep changing the machine every time you go on there so again you've got your heirloom stitches satin satin stitches there we go that's another one that's got a lovely feature on it so again we've got a nice range of satin stitches here we have two pages it's different ones so I'm going to have stitch number five Okay. If I only want one stitch, I can either do this and just pop one stitch in with a lock stitch or automatically now I like doing book covers. If I just want one pattern repeat, I literally just take that off. I will just pop that on and as I start sewing, I will press the lock stitch button so it's only going to do one pattern repeat for me. So we're going to start sewing. Press lock stitch. And you know that's active because it's, it's the little light there is flashing at me. So it's going to do one pattern repeat of this and then we're going to have a look at the elongation on here. So it's just done me one little pattern repeat of this stitch. So I'm going to take that a little bit further down. Bring this up and if you can see here you've still got everything we had before but we've also got this little symbol here and it's times one. So if I times two, what it does it will elongate the satin stitch for me automatically to double the length. It will go up to five times the length. It's really handy. It looks absolutely fabulous with variegated threads for decorative stitching. Um, and again, you can build your sequences up with them. So it's just works on the satin stitches, so it's everything in the satin group. And it's just have a little play with the machine and find which ones you like. So again, that's gone up to twice the original length. So you can see it's still got density of it is still a really good quality stitch but it's elongated it.
So well, you can do it up to five times on the stitch. That's a really handy feature on the satin stitch. And again, we can go back to default and close the screen again for us. Um, tapering. Let's have a look where we've got tapering on here. Let me have a look and see which ones we should go into and have some tapering. We'll stay in decorative, I think. Pop back into here. Into decorative. You can see how quick and easy it is to change things while you're actually on the machine. You haven't got to push in loads of buttons or anything like that. So we're going to go into decorative and we're going to go on to, I think, the lilac one. So I think we're going to 41. So I'm just going to go through. There we go. And it's the next screen. So 41, so it's this one. So this little icon here now is active, which is tapering. Press that, and you can see it's come up here now. So we can taper both ends. So I'm going to go 45 degrees and 45 degrees. And you can see it's actually changed on the screen. So press OK. What I'm going to do is get another piece of felt here. So we're going to start, I'm going to go on this way. Okay, I'm going to start sewing. It's really handy. I have lots of these felts at home where I've sort of embroidered labels out and things like that so I know exactly what size I'm looking at when I want to replicate them. And with this one, as you can see, we're just going to sew. So when I think, oh, that's far enough now or I've measured it so I know, I can press the lock stitch. And I should have actually taken off the, um, the automatic cup because it will cut for me now. So we're going to lock stitch. It'll finish the pattern repeat before it does it. And if you can see, the screen's altered now, so it's come up and it's asking me, do I want to do the same size again? So if I go OK, then normally I would have taken the auto foot lift on the cut off. I'm going to pop that back down, put the needle in, pivot. It's amazing. I always get this straighter when I'm standing at one side doing it, which is quite good. I'm going to start again and it will do, it'll replicate that size for me exactly. I say it's a great way of doing borders around things. I've done quilt labels and just popped a little border around them like this. And it's just worth having a little play with all the different tapering, the different angles that you've got because you can get some quite amazing results just by having a little play with it. It's always a good idea when you get a machine like this to to actually make yourself like a little sample book almost with it and just have a go at all the different stitches and bits and pieces on there. Don't be frightened to write notes on it. It's okay. It's going to do exactly the same length for me before it stops. And again, so long as I don't touch that, I can just keep going with that length all the time. So it's a really nice way. It's not too it's reasonably square on the corner. So it's a really nice way of making little borders up. But just play with the stitch. So everything that's in purple on here with the tapering, you can do this with it. I'm going to close that. So I'm now going to go back onto here so it's gone away again. The other one I will go into and just show you quickly is the quilt stitches. So we have standard piecing stitch so if I press the quarter inch it's changed to the O foot it also drops the stitch length for me to 1.8 which is the length you would normally do it manually on your machine with it um, you've got mock hand quilting on here you've got lots of different stitches to play with so they're really some of these are really nice when you start embroidering on them Come back onto here so look, we've also got the long stitches, you've got Stitch Composer as well, so you can create your own stitches with the software on the AccuTools. So you, you load that onto your laptop, which will be Microsoft, and that's compatible with, and you can create stitches on there. It's a little manual, well, the inbuilt manual on the, on the software will show you how to do that. So that's worth having to play with as well, because you can get some really unique stitches then. And because it's 9mm stitch width, they are a really nice size. Switch that one off. Straight stitch needle plate. So we, if we want to change a needle plate, so I'm going to be, I don't know, quilting or making some curtains or doing something like that. So to change a needle plate, again, first thing I do is lock the machine out so it's quite safe. The little stylus as well will live in the top. And I'm going to slide the accessory box off. And if we can see here, there's a little button. So I'm going to take the foot up. I'm going to press this down. And that will automatically lift the stitch plate out for me. So there's no need to unscrew anything. It's such a quick and easy way to do it. So I'm going to pop the other stitch plate in. 
and I'll show you. The machine is so clever, it won't let you do anything wrong. So it's telling me now that I've put, it knows I've changed the needle plate and it's asking me to make sure that I've got the correct foot on it. So I can work with it. I'm going to unlock it now. And as you can see, all these stitches have been greyed out. If I go to select from the other ones, the only one I can go into now is quilting. And these are the only stitches that will let me do. So it's not going to damage your machine at all. So it's just remembering when you've done it, make sure you put the right foot on. And that's quite straightforward to do. So what I'm going to do now is lock the machine out. And I just want to show you the difference in the plates. I'll take this off again. With the stitch plates, if you can see the difference. So this is the standard one. So you can see you've got quite a wide slot there. So that allows the needle to form all the decorative stitches. Here now we haven't. Uh, so you've still got a little bit of room for movement with your quarter of an inch. But with the straight stitch, it's going, it's much better penetration. So if you were doing a fine fabric, um, it's not going to take it right down. We've all had it where it, the, the same machine eats your fabric, so you shouldn't get that with that. And again, it's brilliant. If I'm doing curtains, a lot of quilting, pop the straight stitch plate on and off you go. So pop that one back on now. And just press it. It's a good firm press in the centre there for it. There it does it. Um, so the other, I'm just going to pop this back on again. It just slides on. There we go. So again, it's telling me to make sure I've got the proper presser foot on, so I know I have. Now the other little icon on the top here is sewing applications, or I should say the little t-shirt button. So if we press that, it opens up a whole new screen. So and it goes through a lot of basic things that we're using the machine for. So rolled hems, gathering, over edge stitching, zippers. So if I want to put a zip in, Am I going to put a lap zip or a concealed zip? Well, I'm going to put a concealed zip in. So, and it takes me through step by step and it shows you where you need to be stitching. It changes the foot for you. So it literally just walks you through. We've all had a moment where we've come to do something that we've done many times before and forgotten. I'm going to pop back into this. So it's all different ones. So again, two pages. So we're going to go through to the next page. Basting, sewing on buttons. Um, for your tacking, like little bar tacks on the corners, pliques, quilting, patchwork. With the patchwork, really good feature is, so we've got the straight stitch or the lockomatic one, so it's telling me to put the O foot on. Pop that on. Which is the... There we go. Pop that one on. It just clips on quite easily. So now I'm going to do, if I'm going to do my seam length, actually let me just take that one instead pop that through so you can see we've got the guide on here I'm going to pop that down you can actually put this down manually which is quite handy and lift it up so then you can take it down and, and move things if you actually lift it up manually you have to put it down manually when you start to sew again so now I'm going to go onto the straight stitch which is straightforward so I'm going to start and then I'm going to stop and again, it's going to come up now and ask me, do I want to do the same size seam? So if I go OK, I'm going to just cut that, turn it round, and it will. It is absolutely brilliant for chain piecing, anything like that. So it will automatically do that same length seam for me over and over again until I tell it to stop. And again, I'll cut that. That's a really handy feature on here for those of us who quilt. So we're going to come back into here. So this one will take it back again. So for quilting, we've got your straight stitch quilting. You can do a clasp stitch, which again is lovely because it will just do one of these stitches for you. So if you want to tie a quilt, it's a much quicker way of doing it. Um, I'm going back into here. So you have got your free machine quilting, your sculpture quilting, hand look quilting again monofilament in the top, coloured thread in the bottom and pull it pops it through. What I want to look at is free machine quilting. It's this one. So it's telling me to lower the feed dog, which is just the little switch on the side here. So that's lowered. Shows me what foot to use, which is the standard a um which is actually the standard darning foot which most of us are really familiar with is this one. But this machine also comes with these two tiny little quilting feet, which is the Q Q QO and QC. So if I go into straight stitch two, you will see this is altered to this. I'm going to lock it out. 
And again, I want to lift the presser foot up, pop the foot off here. And if you can see, these little feet have got two bars on. So they go on slightly differently. They go on the same way as if you've got an applique foot or the button same foot, they go on exactly the same. There's a little heel at the back of the foot holder, so you slide it on and press it up and you'll hear it clip in. Uh, it's so quick and easy to set it up then for quilting. So I'm now going to, just, let's just unlock. And again, with this, you've got the option, the little icon here. So you can actually, if I've got something really heavy under there, like I'm going to pop this up to two, which is what you'd use for this set. Okay. So the foot is actually now, is going to glide. Let me pop that back in there so I don't lose it. So I'm going to put that down. It's going to do a one stitch stop for me so I can pull the bottom thread up if I want. And then, and then we just free machine. It's such a fabulous way to free machine because it's actually gliding over the fabric as opposed to hopping up and down. And again, if it's a little bit too low, you can take it up. And free machine, it's very therapeutic, but it is practice, unfortunately. So, but it's just so quick and easy to set up with this. There's nothing you need to do. And it would just, it's just fabulous to use. It's one of those, once you've tried these, I, if I'm honest, I never use my darning foot anymore because I love it doing it like this so much. It's just so easy to use. And it's so easy to set up to do it as well. When we were in the settings before and we activated the resume mode button, so what happens is I've now I've switched the machine off. So when I come to switch back on again, it's going to automatically ask me if I want to go back to my last pattern. So if I go OK, telling me to lower the feed dog, and it's taken me exactly back to what I was doing before. So I was free motion quilting, so it's taken me straight back to that setting. So it's a really handy feature that for you. Back on here, so I'm going back into sewing applications on here. So they're really worth having a look at when you when you get your machine, just to walk through and pick out the ones that are more appropriate to you. So on the bottom, we've got the machine here. We've also got a little foot here with a plus. So it's some extra feet you can get for the machine covered in here. So you can do beading feet, um, ribbon and sequin feet, piping, cording, free motion couching, foot and pin tucking. So the different feet you can get. So if you want to do, say, the ribbon and sequin foot. It tells me to pop the feed up. It's very clever. It won't let me do anything that um, I shouldn't do. And you feed the ribbon through, and then you can you can couch it onto something. Or I've done it where I've put a narrow ribbon onto a wider ribbon. And again, it's bringing all the different sizes here for you. So you can literally, and we go through. And you've got a little bit of decorative stitch on here as well. Straight stitch in the middle. So there's a lot you can do on these. Take it back. So it's just popping into the free motion couching foot again lower the feed dog um, and it will show you pop it on so it looks a little bit like a darning foot where you feed your cord through and then you can zigzag it down into place and pop that back up again and go back back onto here so i'm going to pop say in together and then i want to go back to a straight stitch now so we come out of that totally so that's just a really an overview of the sewing side it's one of those machines you can really take some time to get to know it and play with it and find out what you want to do with it more so some people we all do different things i quilt i've got one of my colleagues who loves dressmaking i know somebody else has a lot of soft furnishings or general craft work but it will do everything for you without any problem at all and um, there's a lot of scope to grow into so it's not something you're going to grow out of anytime soon so that's the covering the sewing side so i think now we'll have a little look at the embroidery side Look at the embroidery side to that machine. So many features, it's so comprehensive, isn't it? Um, now remember you're saving £500 while we have the stock. So Janome have very kindly given us a limited amount of stock and taken £500 off the price. When those sell through, you'll be paying almost £2,500 for that same machine. So if you're in the market to upgrade maybe, you want an embroidery and a sewing machine, you can't make your mind up which one to go for, why not go for the both of those together? Um, when we move on to the embroidery, side of the machine you are going to need some stabilizer behind the um, behind the hoop behind your fabric or on top of your fabric depending on what kind of fabric you're using and we've got a great starter kit this is a a really good way of kind of understanding of getting your head around all of the different stabilizers and what they're for because stabilizers for embroidery machines or for embroidery free motion embroidery even are 
as much as a minefield as waddings, battings, interfacings, where do you start? And a lot of it is just personal choice or dependent on the project that you're making. So in this selection, you've got one of each of different types of tearaway stabilizers. Um, we have water soluble stabilizers. We've also got some of that water soluble stabilizer that you can use to make um, freestanding things. So you don't use this one with fabric, that's the Ultra. Um, you embroider straight onto this, so your stabiliser goes into the hoop. And then when you wash it away, if you wash it away just with water, it will leave a certain degree of stabiliser in your embroidery. So then you can make three-dimensional items. So you can make bowls, you can make ornaments, you can make Christmas decorations. You will need a special stitch, so it's not any old embroidery um, design that you can use with that stabiliser. If you wash it away um, with a little bit of detergent, it washes away completely. Completely. But if you want something to stay firm, then leave a little bit of that in your machine. And um, there's also your cutaway stabilizers, different colors to try as well. But every one of those is different. What you'll also find in here is a really useful booklet. So it's not all in English, so don't be too daunted. But this will give an explanation to each one of these. So the tearaway stabiliser, your iron-on stabiliser, the adhesive stabilisers, and these are all under one section of cotton fixers. Um, so it's explained in a lot more detail. Um, so you're not just getting a whole packet of stabiliser then you're wondering what on earth you're going to do with it. So this is well worth adding to your order if you're buying the embroidery sewing machine right now um, or if you have an embroidery machine of your own at home already and you haven't experimented with different types of stabilisers then I'm sure you're going to find one that will suit your project. So whether it's freestanding, free motion embroidery, because remember you can use these if you're using free motion embroidery on the sewing machine that you have right now, it's not just for use with the sewing machine. Or even if you're hand embroidering, whether that's in a hoop or you just like to do a little bit of hand embroidery on your fabric. So lots of those. Have a look on the website for more details there. So that's um, sewingstreet.com. And there are all your details. So it's Madeira Premium Stabilisers you need to look for. And it's £10.99. So a nice, nice little collection there, well worth popping on your order. I, th I, I always use a tearaway stabiliser no, no matter what I'm making. Um, I think just because I'm used to it. So it's quite nice in a way to have all of this selection to have a play with and see which one's really going to suit you best. Now I know we're dying to get back to Jane um, with our brand new sewing machine. So exciting to have the launch here. Remember it is exclusive to Sewing Street for now with that £500 savings. So you've learnt all about the sewing side of the machine. Let's take a look at embroidery. Right, so now we're actually going to hoop up, ready to put this onto the embroidery machine. So first of all, I'm going to take the hoop, the larger hoop, and you see there's a little screw in the corner. So I'm going to unscrew that. Um, what I would say as well, you get a little screwdriver, which is great to loosen it off when you're taking the fabric out. But please don't tighten the screw up with your screwdriver because you will thread the screw eventually. So we're going to take the inner hoop out. Then I've actually got some felt with a stabiliser already ironed onto the back. I'm going to pop that into the hoop. Again, make sure you've got a good flat firm surface to do it. Don't do it on the ironing board because it doesn't work. I've tried it. It's a bit too bendy. So pop your hoop in and again, it's all marked. So you've got left and right at the top and you've also got little arrows. And again, you may have to just loosen off the screw slightly and it will just clip in. Put it all in. I'm going to give it a good firm press down. So it's level and then tighten the screw in the corner again. Finger tight is fine. Um, so don't over tighten it and don't use a screwdriver. Tighten it up. Make sure it's all lovely and tight and it's quite, the tension's quite good. And then you are actually ready to pop that onto the machine and embroider. Right, so we've hooped our fabric up, so now we're actually ready to embroider. Now, before we start, there are a couple of things that we need to know. So I'm going to lock the machine out. Um, you know, we spoke about the straight stitch plate earlier, so for the embroidery, you need to use that. So we're locked out, so it's just a quick change. Put up. Take that one off and pop this one in. And that's that done. That one is done. And the other thing you will find is in your pack, you will have another bobbin case, and there's a little yellow dot on it. You can see that. If you're not using a Janome bobbin fill, then you need to pop this in because it's got a different tension setting. But because we're using Janome bobbin fill, I will leave it as I am. So right, so we are now ready to embroider. So I'm going to unlock the machine and we're going to have a little walk around the screen first. So 
Here we've got the three little icons. This is what it will come up with. So we have got the little flower, alphabet, and editing. So to select your first design is really, really straightforward. Just touch the little icon, and all the different categories will come up here. We've got with it sediment there, and I've got four pages, so we can go through and through and back again. So for this, at the moment, we could just for argument's sake, we want to do design off here. I want to do the little owl. I touch the screen. It's telling me here that the hoop's going to move. And put that. It's telling me what hoop size I need, which is a square 14, which gives you a sewing size of five and a half by five and a half inches. So I can pop the hoop on and then I can just start embroidering if I want to. So I'm going to walk through some of these little icons here. So the first one at the top, the little flowers, if I touch that, it actually shows me what number, the first colour, what part of the design it's actually going to embroider. And I can skip through on here with the stitches and do them. So it's just showing you what colour's doing what. So it gives you the option to have a look and change things if you want to. I'll take that one off and go back, back to number one. The second one here, it tracks where the actual design is going to sit. So I'm going to pop the hoop on in a minute when we go to, go to embroider something and we'll track it around then. It's a really good feature because sometimes you're not quite sure if you've hooked a garment or something like that, you might want to move it around a little bit. So we can move it around to see where the design's sitting. And we can also baste it in the hoop as well, single or a double baste in the hoop, which is brilliant for doing, if I'm doing flannels and things like that, that's a really great way of holding those in well. The one here, again, we can move it around within the hoop if we want to. That just allows us some movement of it. We can also move the angle slightly if we need to. If we've hooped a garment or something that we can't quite get straight, so we need to move the angle of the embroidery design. The little one here with the coloured squares. Now this shows me how many colours are in that design. And also the numbers on the end here, they relate to Janome threads. Um, I tend to leave mine set on Janome, but I do have a massive mix of different types of embroidery threads. If it's a design I want to replicate, I've got a little notebook and I'll just write down what I've used in there. The little needle next to it here actually shows us how many stitches are in each colour. And that's really handy, so it gives you a rough idea of how much thread you're going to use and also how long it'll take on each colour to do. The next little icon. We have got the automatic tension, we've got the thread cutting length, we've got the foot height for the embroidery. You can alter it manually, but 1.7 is the standard. But if you're doing something like a quilt or something really heavy underneath it, just alter it to 2.2. So that means the foot is slightly higher off the work. And again, we've got the different feet on here. So we've looked at the couching feet already. So because we, we're embroidering, we want the P foot, but the two couching feet are on here. So if you're going to do some couching, you need to select the relevant foot. For us. So what I'm going to do now, I want to do a little bit of editing on the on the screen for you just to show you how that works. I'm going to go and back home and I'm going to select a new design. So I want to pop into now, I'm into favourite designs, so I'm going to select this little flower here, number four. It's a really nice little one. Again, it's telling me to keep my hands out of the way. It won't do anything, the machine. That me. So it's showing me the flower and the colours, but I want to actually edit that flower. So I'm going to go home and I'm going to pop it onto the editing screen. And you can see here it's showing me in the little FA10 hoop, which is the right size. But I want to duplicate the flowers, so I'm going to select a different hoop. So the icon here, all the hoops are here. So I'm going to go into the largest one, which is the RE20. And again, you can see the embroidery area sizes on all these. So now you can see I've got my tiny little flower there. So I can move it round within here. I can duplicate it if I want to. I can also resize it. Now you can only resize 20% either way, up or down, because it won't physically, I'd already move stitches when on the embroidery machine. You can buy additional software which will do that for you. So if I take it up even just 5%, so you can see it's actually physically moved on the screen, so I'm going to go OK. And because I've got that one slightly larger now, I don't want this one anymore. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to pop it into the bin. So that's his hoop selection, duplicate, bin and resize on here. Again, we can rotate it so you can do a 45 degree or single degree rotation so you can be really accurate. We can mirror image it and we can end to end. This little icon's got nothing in it at the moment because we've got no alphabet on the screen. 
that one will center our pattern for us and the next one I'm going to pop that into the corner if I touch that we'll pop that into all the corners so I'm going to go back and I'm going to duplicate it again and I'm going to pull another one here so again so we can duplicate it like that. So you can build up some really nice patterns really quickly using the inbuilt designs on the machine. And again, I could pop some font in, anything like that. If I want to recolor, it's this one, and it takes you through all the colors. It's telling me that I've got three colors. The first one is yellow, and I've got the darker blue, and then a paler blue. And you can go in and rechange the colors if you want to quite easily. And if, again, when you've done that, you want to save your changes, just pop on OK. I don't want to save these, so I'm going to take that one off. So it's just getting used to working around the screen. And again, that's for grouping. Say I've got something in this quadrant here. OK, that's great. It's perfect, but I want to move it. You can group it and move it as a single object and then ungroup it. This one will take us through and it will stitch all the layers in a single colour. So if I wanted to tone on tone, then that's what I would press. So it still shows the colours, but it won't physically stop for you to change the threads between each one. This one is a really handy little button to remember because if I go now thinking that's my design, I'm happy with it. OK. It's telling me now it's ready to embroider. It's telling me there I've got 24 colours because what it's doing, because I've duplicated it, it's te teach, because I've duplicated it, it's treating it as individual objects, which I don't really want. So I'm going to go back onto this one which groups everything so it's okay so I always think of it as a four down to two okay and it's now gone down to three colors so it's going to treat it as one individual object now that works we've got the same designs on there so I think now I'm well, a little sample I've done of this so I'll pop that out in a second but I think we need to have a look at some font as well so if I'm going to go back and again, the key to remember is that once you've gone back, it ungroups it again for you because it doesn't know what editing you want to do. So I'm going to go home and I'm going to select fonts. It's 20 different fonts built in. So if I want to see what brings them all up here. And it's telling me there I've got two pages so I can go across these. So the micro gothic is a really handy one because it's a tiny font, but it's really crisp and clear. Uh, we've also got little border designs we can put together and I think in a minute we'll stitch out a monogram for us. It's great for doing your towels, dressing gowns, anything like that. You can really personalise things. So I think we're just going to go back. Let me just pop down. Get that. And I think we'll just go for first grade, which is one of my favourites. And again, when we select it, you can see on the screen you've got upper and lower case. We can have small, medium and large. On sizes and it will go in vertically and horizontally so I'm going to keep this on to medium and I'm just going to type in and then I've got my word in there so you can if you want to check your spelling go back through again and it will take you right back through and this so if that's I'm happy with that so that's okay so now I can take that I can move it up the screen and now our little alphabet icon is active. So if I touch that, I can actually bend this. I can open it out a little bit so you can really, really play with it. And when you're happy with it, if I go OK, it'll save it. I can move it down slightly with the little icons here. It's a great thing. And I always say to people, well, I speak to a lot of people at exhibitions, when it's new and you get it home, just play with the screen because until you press the start button, it's not going to do anything. It won't do anything at all until you're really happy that you've got it exactly how you want it and then you can just embroider away again you can do all the other functions you can move it around you can mirror image it you can change the colors so but i think we're going to because i've got some um a hoop already done i think we'll do a little monogram to show you how easy they are i don't want to save this so i'm going to close it but it's going to ask me and if i forgot and i'm thinking oh no i do want to keep that pattern then you can save it onto the machine or onto a USB stick. So I think a little monogram. So I'm going to go again, one to five, one to here, through, and we've got two or three letter monograms. So I'm going to go for two letters. So what we do now, you've got little borders on the bottom, so I can just select one of those, go for that one. Um, I'll put my initials in, which is J, B. Okay. 
send me the hoop size. Okay, send me one color and it's going to take five minutes. So it's really quick and easy to do and it's fabulous for to say doing your towels or slippers or anything like that but you must remember if you're doing that that you need to pop your water soluble on top of anything with a pile so you don't lose the stitches in it i've got a little towel here which i will show you i'm sure you've all seen it before but it just really illustrates well the difference when you're doing toweling or anything with a pile that one has got some stabilizer on it tear away pull off afterwards and that one hasn't and you can see how you've lost all your stitches into the pile of the fabric i would even put that on with knit sweatshirting anything i'm just pop that one away so it's always worth remembering to do that right so i think we can pop pop this hoop on and we can embroider that so it's telling me i've got it in a, actually in a larger hoop than the machine is telling me and you've got to bear with me because it's it's quite difficult to hoop up at this angle there we go that's on so now, when I said before, when we were looking on here, we have actually here got this little icon. So I can track around where that's going. So if I press this, that is actually going to track around the design area. So if I think, oh, I want to move it into the corner, I want to move it left a bit, or, you know, whichever way you want it to go, you can then go back and, re re and change it. So I'm quite happy with where it is. So if I press OK now to start, and it's going to start embroidering that monogram for me. And it's going to take me five minutes. Here we go. So by the magic of TV, we now have our finished monogram. It's a brilliant way to use for personalising things, gifts, if you were doing something for a wedding, anything like that. It really is so quick and easy to do and you get a perfect stitch out with it. And again, please note on all these, no jump threads. Many years ago, we spent hours trimming off little jump threads where the, where the machines moved. That's all done for you. So it's as it comes off, you can use it straight away. So now I'm going to have a quick look at the instruction just to show you what a really good book it is to use. It's so straightforward. It's ring bound. And again, when we look in here, everything is explained really clearly. It's quite straightforward to use. And again, on the back of the book, we've got everything about your embroidery, how to edit designs, everything that you can possibly think of, troubleshooting pages. We've also got a printout of all the stitch charts on the machine. And um, again, it's telling me here it's ordinary sewing. So these are the different fonts that are on the ordinary sewing side. And then we come to all the lovely embroidery designs that are built in that you can use. I've got a couple of these stitched out here that I'll show you in a minute. But we've got a fabulous alphabet. We've got cross stitch. We've got embroidery, um, the lace designs for water solubles that we can use. We've also got the couching designs. We've got some nice decorative ones. There's just so many on there. And again, there's lots and lots on the internet that you can buy quite easily. We've got another fabulous alphabet on here. Again, some basic quilting designs, some sashi co, and so much on here. And again, lots of built-in fonts, which are all on here as well. So let's have a quick look at those. And there's our monograms with all the different borders that we can use. So I've got a couple of samples I've done here. So I'm going to fold that up and pop these out. When we looked earlier at the little flower, 
we can see, I embroidered this earlier, well I just literally grouped it and just embroidered it out and it's just so quick and easy to do and so effective so that one tiny little flower pattern can be used in so many different ways. I've also embroidered out from the little inbuilt alphabet which is a really nice alphabet. I think I stand size these about 5% each letter but again you can go 20% either way so it's really nice. They would actually look fabulous on some bunting, make the letters larger, that would be great. Beautiful little flourish alphabet. That is really lovely alphabet to do. That's so popular. And it, it sews out beautifully. You can't get the textures in there on the camera, I'm afraid. Some sashiko. That's just four of the little designs. I've just put them all together just to show you the different ones in there that you can do. But again, you can group them all together if you want to. So you could actually make quite a good block size out of these. And some of the little basic quilting designs, just a couple of little ones here that are built into the machine. The thing to make sure when you're using these is if you're going to actually put them on a quilt when you're finishing it, make sure you use this bobbin thread the same colour as the top, otherwise you'll be able to see the white bobbin thread on the back. The other thing what I remember that we need to remember is that in the machine as well, to start you off, you're also going to get two lovely big felts with stabiliser and a roll of bobbin fill as well, just to keep you going when you first get home. There's nothing worse than having a new toy and thinking, I've got, I've got nothing to use it with. So... That is really, and that's a lovely overview of it. There are also all the apps available, which you can download from the app store. So you've got AccuSketch, AccuEdit, AccuMonitor, AccuDesign. So it's really worth having a look around. It's a fabulous machine with so much potential. So with the editing and everything, it's really great to have a play with the machine and try some of the inbuilt designs. As I said before, there's lots out there on the internet that you can do. Um, I'm quite fond at the moment of doing in the hoop projects. I've brought along a couple of bits I've done. So I've got my little owls, which I've had to retrieve off my grandson. They are literally made totally in the hoop. Um, you've got a tiny little bit of hand sewing when you're finished, just to turn them, just to slope where you stuff them. And the other one that I'm really fond of at the moment is doing little like cosmetic bags all sorts of bags the whole thing even the zip is put in in the hoop and then you can just take it out trim it up and you've got a really nice little bag so it's there's just so many different things you can do with them and again lace designs this is an older an older one that we did some time ago so that's a really nice little christmas table mat all done in the hoop in different sections and then sewn together Again, as I said before, remember when you're doing these to change your threads for the reverse of them. So there is a huge amount that you can do with these projects now. You can make handbags, table runners, quilts, all kinds of things with the machines. It's just a case of where your imagination takes you to with it. Right, so the last really big accessory we need to look at with the machine, we've got the cloth guide here, which is like an acrylic, it looks very... Very odd thing, but it actually works in conjunction with the embroidery unit. So I'll just pop the embroidery unit on now. I'm going to come onto the screen. And on the bottom of the screen, you can see a little icon here, which actually looks... I'm going to open that. It's going to tell me to keep my hands clear because it will move the embroidery unit for me. So that's on there. So now this one, again, I've got the little clip here. So it's going to pop into there and I'm going to clip it in. And that gives me now, I can be really, really precise with where I'm going. So I well, so I'm going to go to a quarter of an inch. So that's going to give me my quarter of an inch seam, but you've got a really, really long guide for it because you've, you've got the extra piece on the front here. So that's absolutely brilliant doing your stitching so that will bring it straight down but you've got this huge piece here that really keeps it straight it's very accurate as well um, and again I know a lot of dressmakers like this because you can set it at your 5 8 and that's it that's your dressmaking seam so it just keeps your work really straight and consistent all the time with it um, what the one thing is when you finish with it and you want to park it away make sure that you just unclip it and take it out and then on the bottom here We'll press this, saying again to keep your hands clear and it's going to park the carriage away and that's it. So it's just a really useful piece of kit that a lot of people tend not to use but once again you get used to it, it's a really good add-on to your sewing. But just to summarise with the embroidery side of the machine, there are some things that are quite specific that you really must take care to do when you're using the machine. Um, the first thing is, whenever you're detaching or attaching the embroidery unit, make sure the machine is not switched on, so make sure you've switched it off before you take the unit off and again make sure you've got a nice flat table when you're popping the unit on and get always use your bobbin fill for the embroidery you get a much better result with it and make sure that you're hooping and stabilizing correctly 
we will probably look at doing hooping and stabilising again at some point. Um, but there are lots of different stabilisers out there that you can use. And it's worth getting it right because you're not going to get a good finished project unless you've got that um, garment or whatever you're embroidering on hooped correctly with some decent tension on it and the right stabiliser to use. Right, everybody, it's lovely to have been here with you today and hopefully I'll be back fairly soon, all being well. But in the meantime, if you've got any questions or queries about the Atelier 9 or any of the machines, pop them into the studio by email or on Facebook, whichever way you go, and they can get them to me and I can answer them for you. So until next time, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you so much, Jane, for that. What an amazing sewing stroke embroidery machine that is, isn't it? Now, remember, you're making a £500 saving. And at the moment, this is a machine that is exclusive to Sewing Street. So um, take advantage if you're in the market. You will need, as Jane said, stabilisers, though. So let me give you the details again of these 12 sheets of stabiliser, which is in a starter kit, which means you have a selection of tear-away, of water-soluble and of cutaway stabilisers um, in the blacks and the whites. And I just think this is an ideal opportunity to be able to try different stabilisers out without having to buy a whole roll. So if, like me, you're used to using one or two different types of stabilisers, maybe you didn't even realise that there are so many available, this is your chance to give them a go, because you never know, there might be a better one for you out there. So for use with your embroidery machines, but also if you're free motion embroidering or even if you're hand embroidering, I'm sure you're going to find something suitable for whatever project is you're making here. So that's £10.99. Um, if you're going for the embroidery machine, though do pop this onto your order have a play with the different ones um, now then if you want any more information if you want to see the details of that machine again take a look at our website which is sewingstreet.com um, otherwise this will be repeated on our youtube channel so if you just joined us live now at 20 past 11 on a sunday morning um, it won't be there till later on this afternoon or maybe tomorrow morning but you will be able to watch that video over and over and over again so that's on youtube on our sewing street channel so take a look there so i'll be back with you again tomorrow morning monday morning um, with fabrics and more at eight o'clock we have sewing street surgery where I, i'm going i'm going to sit down i'm announcing that we're going to have a sit down and have a chat so if you have any questions that you want to i've got to find a chair first um, then <laughs> you can you can put some uh, questions on our facebook page now if you wish or come through to the studio in the morning on facebook again and then at 10 o'clock we have the elna 780 plus sewing machine another exclusive to sewing street so it's been lovely to have your company this morning um, stay home stay safe stay sewing and i shall see you bright and early at eight o'clock in the morning bye bye